Welcome to Coach Hayes Football Live. He can talk about anything from high school to the pros. This guy knows the game, so you better not be half-stepping. I can guarantee you most of the audience is going to agree with me before they agree with you. Strap in, because Coach Hayes is about to... Crack your cranium and fertilize your brain. Go ahead and Right here, right now. Subscribe now and check out CoachHayesFootball.com. What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody, man? Appreciate y'all coming through. Just a little bit late. Just jumped off of Hayden Street. Over there with my man D Streeter from Footballville, man. We were talking about destroying and uh unfortunately broke his neck making a tackle. Uh, and we talked about that. So if you'd like to go check that out, you're more than welcome. It's on the channel. Um, real quick, give a couple of shout-outs to a couple of people before we get started. Let me know everything looks good, sounds good, and we ready to rock and roll. Look at that, boy. L and V to produce in the building with the thumbs up. Loving it. Still Kane. What up, coach? He throwing them U's up on him. I hear you. And Derek White, this should be good. Man, it should be good. Like I said, we got a couple of people in the building. And we're going to talk about a couple of things when it pertains to Colorado. Um, as the title says, are the Colorado Buffaloes focused on football? There's been a lot of talk, and you saw the thumbnail up there. It says attraction or distraction. And I'm just posing a question, right? I told y'all I've taken my pill for 2024 of watch and see. And a lot of people have going through the thing of Coach Prime does things differently. And he does do things differently. Um, but I would like to know, matter of fact, maybe I could put a poll up. I'll put a poll up. Is it a traction or a distraction? And when I say that, is it a, what? what's happening? Well, let me stop. Let me go through some of the things that have been happening, and then I can add, then ask the question. Um, yeah, you know, I do the show once a week, so there's been – uh, things where the players are doing the diamond testing on each other's chain. Well, I'm sorry, necklace. I hate the word chain necklaces and things like that. Um, are, you know, uh, Sh uh, Shador Sanders has the new cyber truck, the beast there, the first one in Colorado. Um, there were, there was an email, um, apparently emailed to coach prime in reference to some of his players, not being, uh, students, in the classroom, they talked about those type of things. And so I guess the question is, is it a traction? Meaning, will this kind of stuff attract players to the program? Or is it a distraction for the current players? I'm just posing the question. You guys can answer how you feel. I'm going to put a poll up. I'm going to see if I can put this poll up. I never, well, I've done it before, but I'll see here if I can put this up. And uh, you guys let me know what your thoughts are. I should have, I should have actually done this prior to the show, but coach was rushing just a little bit. But let me see here. All right, here we go. Um, add a poll, and you let me know what you think. All right, attraction. Or distraction. All right, so you go ahead and answer that poll if you like. Attraction or dis or distraction. We'll definitely see what it is. Um what you guys think. And again, I'll give you my opinion here in a second, but uh, right now I got a hundred percent with two votes says a distraction. Well, we'll see. We're going to open up the phone line. You're more than welcome to call in and give your thoughts about why you say that. But anyhow, um, again, the attraction is does do the things that you see on the internet, the well-off media, the, uh, players, like I say, doing the diamond testing on each other's, uh, necklaces and things are they real diamonds or not the cyber truck all of the kind of the perimeter stuff that goes on outside of football is that a distraction or does that stuff attract do you think that stuff will attract players to the program here's what i'll say let me give my breakdown of this currently we got 69 people in the building appreciate you guys for coming through 
I was watching the internet or looking on YouTube or whatever, and I've been watching some of the Coach JB show, which is Jason Brown from Last Chance U. He's actually been a guest here on the channel before, and he's been talking a lot about those type of things being distractions. However, his co-host Smitty is saying, look, man, that's the old way of thinking, bro. The young cats like that kind of stuff, X, Y, and Z, and they kind of got a dynamic going on. Here's where I'll, I'll, I actually agree on both sides. I agree that the players are doing what they're doing because they're players, they're kids, they're 20, 21, 19, 18. All of these players are doing this. Let's not get this misunderstood. Those diamond tester things, bro, I tell you, I work in the middle school. Them shorties got diamond testers in the middle school. Because they see that kind of stuff on the internet, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, or whatever. The difference is, and I'll talk about the rest of this stuff, it's being filmed and we as viewers have a chance to look through the window of the Colorado football program. But if you don't think them shorties got a diamond tester at Alabama, Florida, Miami, Georgia, Ohio State, y'all out y'all mind. Because that's what the shorties do today. Right? It's just like we were coming along. When the PlayStation 1 came out, we spent all our time playing PlayStation. And coaches hated it. Man, God dang, y'all spent too much time on the PlayStation instead of in the playbook. So I understand that part. I, I totally understand that piece. Right? Um, It's funny. I was just on, on Hay Street. And he put we were playing a clip of Derrick Henry at Alabama. Right? We talk about the hard-nosed Nick Saban. And he was talking about the players. He was talking about a funny story about Nick Saban. And he was talking about the players. Man, y'all be out there with the praying hands and this, that, and the other. But when the game over, you stand on the corner smoking black and miles and drinking liquor. It's all relative. It is. It is all relative. Right? The cyber truck with, Sh with Shador Sanders. Bro, if he got it, he got it. I, I'm not mad at it. I'm really not mad at it. It was no different. It was no different than what? When the players were getting broke off and they were pulling up to practice in the 500 bins. They didn't have cyber trucks then. But these shorties got it. They got the money. So I understand it. The difference is we never saw said player, because I'm not going to mention any names, but we never saw said player pull up and it's filmed pulling up to practice in his 500 bins. You saw the Pony Express documentary, the, the Pony Express talking about SMU when Eric Dickinson had the, uh, what was it? A Chevrolet? I mean, a Chevrolet. Was it a, a Corvette, the gold Corvette at SMU? We're talking 30 years ago. So these things have been happening forever and they will continue to happen. Here's where I think the problem lies. And then I'll talk about the coaching side of it. The problem lies or how do I say it? The, the, the problem with people is that it's being filmed for the world to see. Like I said, we didn't see Eric Dickinson pull up. There's no footage. They had footage of the car, but it, him pulling up to practice. You just hear stories about it. Now we're getting literally firsthand viewership of this through the well off the Trans Am. Thank you. Thank you, El Guapo. We're getting firsthand viewership of this. We heard about Emmett Smith. Worked with a guy, went to school. Emmett Smith in his dorm room had a full wall unit. Now I remember we're talking back in the 80s now a wall unit of music in his dorm room. That's not being filmed. That's not being filmed. So there in lies the difference in my opinion. Now coach JB in his mind, and I understand where he's coming from because from a coach's perspective, you want the focus to always be about football and not the outside stuff. You want the focus to be on the game, the process. 
Hell, Prime pulled up in a limo. There you go. Shout out to Kinez Corner. Thank you. So big time things have always happened. But as from a coach's perspective, you want it to always be about the game. Always about the game. Always learning and getting better. Always trying to find an edge. And that's why I'm taking that wait and see approach. I'm just going to wait and see. If it works for Coach Prime, great. If it doesn't work for Coach Prime, well, he might have to revamp his thought process. I don't know. It's up to him. That's why I say one thing about being a head coach in college football, you have complete autonomy of your program. You run it how you fit. At the end of the day, there's two things that matter, W's and L's. That's it. That's it. W's and L's. That's it. If you're winning, none of that stuff matters. If you're losing, people are going to nitpick on every little thing. And that's just what it is. We've seen coaches who are quote unquote player coaches. And we've seen coaches that are strict by the book and both of them have won player coaches have won national championships, super bowls, high school state championships, whatever we've seen player. I mean, we've seen the straight by the book coaches win national championships, super bowls, high school championships, whatever. I've been on teams where very structured practices. I'm talking about down to the minute. Like you got the horn, you got somebody blowing the whistle, five minutes this period, 12 minutes that period. Boom, when the whistle blow, run to your next station. Boom. Been a part of teams. We'll stay inside run till we get it right. Practice be three hours long. I've seen teams tackle every day. I've seen some teams that don't tackle every day. So that's, to me, it's all on what fits for your program. We'll see. We'll definitely see. We'll definitely find out what people think. And so from the coaching side of it and what how people look at it, I was talking to somebody today about this. And we were talking about the conclusion of, uh, I mean, not the conclusion, but how do we come to this conclusion about why are things the way they are? And he was saying, it's almost like, just follow me on this. Just follow me. It's almost like the military guys who play call of duty. Think they really in a war, but it ain't nothing like the real dude that's out there shooting the M 16. Right. And so for coaches, I'm going to equate them to the guys that's been in the war and they've seen what works and what doesn't work. What keeps you alive? What gives you the best chance? And for people that may be new to football or people that may be um, just jumping on this bandwagon, they're the, they're playing call of duty. And they think, oh, if it don't go right, we just hit the reset button. Just hit the reset button. That's maybe the best way I could describe this analogy. Hopefully it makes sense. Not trying to get, I'm, I'm not just saying anything about military, but it's the difference to understand what it is to be in the war. That's people that coached, cats like JB, cats like myself, cats that look at this game differently, players. And then you got some guys maybe on the outside that think they kind of know. And that's where you get the two budding of heads. I hope that makes sense. Hope I ain't go too far. 862-799-9956. Call on there. I'd love to hear your point of view on this as we talk about do you guys think that's a distraction and so forth and so on. There are a couple other things that has happened in Colorado as well and across the country. Miles, Miles Slusher has entered the transfer portal. He said, peace to the gods. He out of there. There are talks about Savion Washington, offensive tackle, going into the portal. I don't think it's official yet. It may be official. I'm not sure. But when I heard it earlier and when I checked on it earlier, it wasn't official at that time. 
It wasn't official. Matter of fact, shout out to Dave Talks Buffs. Uh, I was on his show earlier in the comments section when I was supposed to be doing something else, but I enjoy watching this show. And Dave, we got to get up. We got to link up, man. I was hoping you would come on tonight. So it's very interesting to hear this. The poll currently right now, 51 votes, 63 say distraction, 37 say attraction. 63 think it's a distraction. 37% says it's an attraction. What do I mean for those that are just jumping in? Attraction meaning what you see on Will Off with all the things that the, the players are doing with the diamond testing, the cyber truck, the things or whatever are attracting players to come to Colorado. The distraction would be, are the players not focused on football? They're more worried about all other stuff that goes on around it. Are they not focused? I just posed a question, and I think I kind of gave both sides of this. Johnny Manziel, there you go, perfect example. Everybody loved Johnny Manziel because they saw what he did on the football field. But imagine if he had a kind of like a well-off media sense where they would follow him around and he was in practice and what he did off the field and in his dorm room or in his apartment. Imagine what that film would look like. Here, we only hear in the story. We're not getting a chance to actually see what was going on. I've heard stories about Peter Ward. But imagine if Peter Ward had a camera follow him around. So what we see with these players, I have to be very honest. I'm not surprised. That's just a generation today. They're doing what, what they do today. I know old school, our old gray self. Nah, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Donnie C says, poorly formed question. Appreciate it. I wouldn't mind if you answered, Donnie C. But as old heads, we like, it's just like music. I don't get it. I don't understand how people go crazy over a two and a half minute song. And I don't understand it because it's not my generation. It's not my time. I'm still listening to old Scarface. Huh? Ghetto Boys. Trick. Outcast. Tupac. Biggie. A young lady had a shirt on yesterday, matter of fact, in class. It was the Biggie album cover with the little baby on it. That's it. I said, you know what that is? She was like, no. I like, Dad, who gave you that shirt? My daddy. She don't even know who she wearing Biggie Smalls on her shirt. She has no clue. So I understand that part. I totally understand that part. Here's another thing that when Coach JB was talking, he was talking about putting targets on your back when you're doing all of these different things. You are opening up the scrutiny, and that's one thing about filming stuff and putting it out there. You're opening up, and we're not talking about trying to put a twist on it and you know, we're just talking about opening up or allowing people into your home. They now have the opportunity to scrutinize. It's not a story. It's not hearsay. It's on video. Now, mind you, those videos can be edited a particular way to look like one thing or something else. But however, you still get a look into the home of the Colorado Buffaloes. And so therefore you you begin to judge. You begin to judge what you see in well off, what you don't see. Me particularly, I look at it as strictly entertainment. I don't try to, to be very honest, I do not try to gather any information on well off media. Now, if I see a one-on-one -on -one throw, yeah, you can break that down. But because I saw one guy bomb this guy, I'm not going to say he's the leading receiver. He's going to be the best receiver on the team. Because again, it's chopped and screwed, right? It's chopped and screwed. That might be the only pass that person caught deep that day. And the DB may have won four to five reps. But those four weren't as pretty or as exciting as that one deep ball. 
So that's why you take those kind of things with a grain of salt. And that's what you have to do. 862-799-9956. Go ahead and call in. And let's see what your thoughts are on uh, if we think that the Colorado Buffalo is focused on football or they really just focus on all the outside noise. I'll just call it that way. Right now, we at uh, 63 votes, 60% distraction, 40% attraction. Now, I want to address the, the email that Coach Prime received from a professor at university. I don't think they put their name out there. But he addressed the team in regards to what was said in the email. You know, people not being prepared for class, people, you know, not participating in these breakout rooms, you know, they become a distraction to the other students that want to learn. The professor, the professor says they have to say things three or four times. They're being disrespected. And I understand coach prime addressed it. And most head coaches get emails from teachers. I don't care if it's a high school college or, or I can't say the pro, but they definitely get emails about students not doing their thing. And I thought what he said made sense. Because if you've ever coached or head coached or hell, even been a parent and got an email very similar to that, how do you address that child or the team? You have to let them know, hey, this is part of the process, dog. Until they change the rules, maybe through NIL or whatever they're going to do with the private or Super League and whatever else. But as of today, you're a student. And I've said this before. I've always said this. One thing an athlete has to learn when they go to college. You, I, I said this. I'm sorry. I was looking at something. As a football player, your coach truly doesn't care about class. Let's call it what it is. Now, Coach Prime addressed that because he was confronted with it. Your professors don't care about football, in essence. You notice, none of that in that letter talked about football. It talked about football players in their class. And their girlfriend don't care about none of that. They don't, they don't truly care about football and that, yeah, you go to practice, whatever. But you got to put that playbook down because she wants some time. You got to put that, that, that English book down because she wants some time. And as a player, you have to learn how to balance those three things. As a player, you have to learn how to balance those three things because all three of those people want something from you. That professor, think about it. She or he is the head coach of that classroom. And if her players slash students are not performing at a high level, that professor is in trouble. It's no different than Coach Prime. If they win four games a year, he's going to be looking for another job. If that professor's students and all of them failing, that professor going to be looking for another job. So that professor cares more about their classroom than they do about the football field. The head coach cares more about the football field than the classroom. And they all need one another. Girlfriend don't care about none of it. So I'm saying all that to say that player has to learn how to balance that stuff. Also, you know, a as a player, you can major in whatever you choose to major as long as they offer it at the university. But some of these players may not want to challenge themselves. In their mind, I came to college to play football, not play school like Cordell, uh, uh, what was his name? Cordell Jones, the quarterback of Ohio State say. Cordell Jones, I think he tweeted out one day. He said, I came to play football, not play school. And that's the mindset of some players. And I understand that. I get it. But I will say this last piece. 
before I move on. 196 in the building. Appreciate it. You better use the university. Don't let the university use you. I've always said that. It makes no sense to go to a university, make them millions of dollars, and you walk out of there with nothing. I never understood it for you to go to a university and walk out of there with nothing. Now, that excludes, you know, your three-year players and they go into the league. But at some point, make it your business as a player to come back and get that piece of paper. Whether you need it or not. Because it's still an accomplishment. It's still an accomplishment. For a lot of these players, they're the first ones to go to college. Don't just be the first one to go to college. Why don't you be the first one to graduate as well? Anybody can enroll in class and say, I went to college. But graduate, hang that thing on the wall. And that's for real, for real. I'm just being honest. I don't know why y'all scared to call in. I'm ready for it. I want to hear it. 862-799-9956. Call on in. Don't be afraid. It always take one person. But while we're waiting on a couple of those, let me know what you think. Trying to keep my salvage clean, uh, really flawed. Let me look at some of the comments here and see what we got. Uh, a lot of people are saying distraction. Gotcha. Uh, Lil Dre Check says, it's only, it's only distracting everyone who's not in Colorado. Okay, I get it. Insane DW. I think it attracts players, but for the wrong reason. It's the sideshow to focus or football. All right. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. Lord, William Terry, Deion Sanders is a fraud. Call in and let me know, William Terry, why you think he's a fraud. Real Life says, if players don't know the playbook but have time to showboat, it's a distraction from the main thing, football. I, I, can, I can agree with that. But let me go back and answer that. I'm glad you said that. But here's the difference between a Colorado and I'll just say Miami. Y'all know I'm a Miami fan. The difference, and I'm not saying one is better than the other, but the difference is Colorado has opened up the window for us to look in and see it. So, just follow me here. So if a player goes out and not and does not perform well, everybody can go back and point to if he was more worried about his playbook or catching balls on the jugs machine more, instead of checking to see if his diamond's real, he'll be a better player. That's the target that Coach JB is talking about. That is the target. Because right now, I said Miami, but I'll use another team because y'all be like, well, you're trying to make them better. Hell, I don't know, USC, whatever, I don't care. Other university. If dude is not playing well, it is now, it's still speculation, but you still are saying you don't have anything truly to point to. And I think that's where the issue lies. So I get where you're coming from. Thank you, real life. All right, we got a couple callers in here. I'll definitely uh <laughs> I'll definitely get to some of these folks here in a second. Lil Dre says, people just mad at all the attention Colorado have. We in the off season, people already mad. Yeah, that's fair. I get it. Um, let me see here. Let me go down. Oh, got a dono in the building. Appreciate you. FPSD for the five dollars. The sheep still don't believe. Dion will prove the sheep wrong again and again and again. Keep the same energy when they are winning. All right. I'm getting to you, callers. I see y'all calling. Give me a second. All right. Appreciate that five dollars. Thank you so much. FPSD. The sheep still don't believe. Dion will prove the sheep wrong again, again, and again. Keep the same energy when they're winning. Okay. Feel like you asked. Okay. Coach, are you going to the UCL versus Colorado game? Go Kane. Yeah, I'll be at that game. I'm literally down the street from the stadium. So, yeah, the bounce house is going to be rocking that day. I'll definitely, I'll definitely be there.
didn't Dion say after last season that they needed more privacy? I don't know. I, I can't say if he said that or not. I have no idea. Oh, I may be, I may have jumped to something. Up. All right, Jay Ward, I'm coming to the call at 6416 right after this comment. Bro, crabs in the barrel is a real within the black community. Why are you so, so fixated with CU and Coach Prime? If that if you if you're pertaining to me, uh, I've always said this. I they hot as fish grease, so why not talk about them? I'm not fixated talking about them because they hot as fish grease. So why not talk about them? If if you if you were bringing that question to me, um, it is what it is. I tell you, for me, hey, I, I've always believed Coach Prime was the best athlete to ever play. Not just football, athlete overall. Best cornerback, hands down. There's no arguably in front of that. And I want to see him succeed. But this is also business one-on-one. I'm doing the same exact thing. Hey, we growing here, baby. It is what it is. But that, that's all it is. So maybe that answers the question. Let me bring the call in. 6416 in the building. Other folks, you're more than welcome to call in. 862-799-9956. 55% to 45% distraction. Call and talk to us. Okay, this is Big E from Atlanta, Georgia. Big E from Atlanta. What's up? You got to turn your TV down a little bit for me, Big E, and let's get into this thing, man. Okay, I'm going to turn it down for you, Rick. Okay, Coach Hayes, uh, I'm listening to uh, Coach Hayes. I think it's more of a distraction. I'm going to tell you why. Coach, Coach Prime, the creator of a monster, he got a lot of people on his uh on his payroll that's eating off of that the uh content that he's creating. The mm -hmm. son, he got uh Darius, he got uh Uncle Neely, a lot of people that are putting him to, to produce this content. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they they all came up off of that. But also what they're doing is showing the flares of his players. You know, like Somebody McLean, he's still on the rough. He's not even priced for spring ball. We don't know whether he's starting or not. We don't know whether he's going to play or not, or he's going to transfer. So it, 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 it's a domino effect. It, it hurting in one way, and it helping other people in another way. So he's kind of like, damn if we don't, damn if we do. He's kind of like, he don't dug in. He can't change that status. Because a lot of people, they're close to him, he's going to let down. You know, Bucky, on the, he on the show every day. Showing off his new suit, his bag, his car, his truck, all that, all that coming from getting contact from the uh, the school of Colorado, you know. So Coach Prime allowed them to come in and get the assets. Mm -hmm. People eating that mm -hmm. up, they getting paid. So, but it hurting the players too, cause they showing the flags of the players right on the field, uh, uh, missing drop passes, doing all that stuff. A lot of schools don't do that. But a lot of schools are getting the same thing that they're getting in our deals, making money on thing about it. They're not getting broadcast like Carter on kids doing. Right. And so therefore, two questions I have to ask you. Two questions. One is you what you already said is a distraction, but that's why I brought it up. Is it attractive to future recruits, transfers, whatever? Or is it, a, is it a distraction, like you said? But I'm gonna, my second thing I'm going to tell you is, and I may jack the quote up, but this is a Coach Prime quote. He talked about the spotlight. The light shines on you. But when it shines, it shows the good and the bad. Now, that's a Coach Prime. He said that. Now, he may, have, he may have heard somebody else say that as well. But he has said that himself, that when the light shines on you, it's going to show your good, and you're bad. And that Correct. is and, and that is what, in my opinion, is kind of is to me, it's not showing good or bad, but what it is 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 creating people to form opinions. Right? Correct. Correct. And and that comes from not being able to actually show what really actually happened. They show snippets, snippets of what's going on, but not the real thing. And that's a disadvantage for the players. You know, they're not even sure him come out of it. He must not be right yet. He must not be where he right yet. But he, he may have come out today. 
that that he, they should have never broadcast that. He said, "Do what Travis does. Do what Travis does." A lot of players ain't gonna take, ain't gonna take that really highly. Why are you telling me to do what this man do? Do what hold Travis on. does. Hold, hold on, Biggie. Do me a favor because I missed it. Hold on. You said Kamani made a statement today. No, not no. Kamani he didn't make a statement. What 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 deal is? He's not actually. They're not showing him for some reason. They're not showing him. He might not be ready yet. He might not be ready for the spotlight yet. They're not showing him for some reason. But we do know that though nobody have his number one jersey yet. His number one number still is locked into him. So okay. he's not even been on the on the uh, broadcast. He's not even on the. Uh, but he's still on the roster though. Okay. He's still on the roster. Miles Slusher, he gonna be the transfer reporter. They took him off the roster, so he, he's gone. But Kamada's still on the roster. For some reason, they they not letting the limelight get on him for some reason. They keep him in the dark. So, you so, know, so, a, might... okay, but here's, so what is exact? so what you're talking about is exactly what happens. The videos open the door, or or, or the, the videos open the window so you can see inside, and you're like, well, where's Kamani at? I don't see Kamani. And now there's the speculation, right? The rumor mill starts. Oh, Kamani going to transfer. Oh, Kamani. I'm not saying, I'm just saying what I've been hearing. Oh, he's going to do this. Oh, he's going to leave. He's not. Now that's what happens because Colorado opened the window for us to look in and we don't see one of the star players. So when you don't see him, what happened? Uh, idle mind is the devil workshop. Now you start right, thinking the right, worst. Right, that's right. Right? And, and only two things thing that can be going on with Kamani is he don't get real good. Oh, he's he's not what they uh, thought he was gonna be, you know. But, that, like, but, the but that's not true. Good. That's not true, right? I'm gonna take a page out of somebody's book. Where's the positive if you don't see him? Why is it he can't be focused on his schoolwork? Why don't he say, "Hey, I'm gonna take the spring off, Coach Prime, because I really need to focus on my classwork." See, nobody thinks the positive. <laughs> well, some people do, but you know. But see, that'd be at a disadvantage for him. Not, I was te- I was just te- I was just teasing. I, I was really teasing. A lot of competition. I know I was it's teasing Biggie. Yeah, I, I was teasing though. I was teasing. I was just teasing because that nobody yeah. like I just told you the coach don't care about that and play. What I was just trying to say was there's a reason. What that reason is? I took my weight and see pill. I don't know. I don't know why he's not there. People ask me all the time, Coach. You heard any word on Kamani? Coach, you know something? No. And if I did, I wouldn't say it. It's not my business. It's not my business. That's Kamani McClain, Coach Prime, and the Colorado Buffaloes business. Even if I knew something or heard something, I wouldn't say it here live. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do it like that. That's not my business. I don't believe me personally. I don't. I'm not here to put players out there because I heard something through the grapevine, so I could be the first one on the video to say this is that. No, that's not my business. Correct. Correct. You said that correct. But see, the for the content that Coach Prime and do, that's not going away. There's too many people making a living off of it. He got too many people on that that's uh, surround here. I'm making a living off what 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 they do. Right. Reach the people media, well off media, uh uh, uh pre game uh, show. Uh, uh, yeah. Right, right. It's a lot of people making making money off of it. So Coach Prime, he can't he, he can't stop it even if he wanted to. So he let a lot of people down. Yeah. Shana Boo. So, so uh mm-hmm. so now so 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 what I'm saying is here is that that we only see what they want us to see. That's true. And and people form an opinion, when you form an opinion that create content, that create more, more, more mystery. True. Right? True. No, I agree. That's true. Are we form an opinion. Are we form an opinion on what's actually going on. And 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 Coach Pine now, Coach Pine will start wearing a cam now. You know, a cam thing. He wear a cam. Oh, thing. Oh, the, the POV like, camera. Yeah. The, yeah, the point of view camera. Right, right, yeah. right, right. <clears throat> but see, what's gonna happen is he gonna say something he ain't got no business saying on that cam because Coach Pine can't keep his mouth shit. He gonna say something he ain't got no business saying. I, li- listen, but here's the thing. He talked about this too when he went and spoke to that class. One thing about it is not live. You can always edit it out. So I guarantee, you know, 
Because think about it. When you hear those videos or if you watch those videos, you don't see a lot of things pertaining to coaching, and that's for a particular reason. Because you don't think other schools will watch and hear calls, and sometimes you'll hear them slip through, right? Sometimes you go watch it and you'll hear, you know, the players making a check or something, and the verbiage just slipped through on the video. But there's a reason you don't see particular, you don't see, you, you don't see very in-depth coaching on there because other guys watch it. So they edit that stuff out. And I understand it. I, I totally get it. And guess what? That point of view camera is what? Another way of creating content for a well-off right. media. And this, I get it. But that's another, that's another window you just opened for positivity and negativity. Okay. I, I got one more thing, Coach, hey, before I go tonight. One more thing before I go. Okay. If, if, yeah, if Coach Prime wouldn't have been doing the content thing last year when they first when he first got to Colorado, if he wouldn't have been doing the content thing, he would have went four and eight. He would have went probably six and six and six or something like that. Is that that he would have caught a lot of team by surprise? You know, when when people start when when he beat TCU, people start really focusing on what he's doing there. And well, they then, got, well, they got yeah, footage, right? Colorado State. Yeah, but the yeah, thing is, you have footage. Yeah, but y'all, hold on real quick, Biggie. You have footage now, right? You play TCU. There's game footage. That's legal to share, right? Um, You have game right. footage. Now, I guarantee TCU, you know, they got the young boys, the GAs, the 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 student assistants, and people scouring well-off media to kind of, kind of try to catch a glimpse of something that they could get from because they didn't really know what to expect except for – Ken State the previous year where Sean Lewis was, and Charles Kelly, you know, some of his defenses from his previous stops. So other than that, it is what it is. But every time you play a game in the season, you give up something. You're going to show something. And once you start getting the game three, four, five, six, you start showing tendencies. That's why the back half of the season is so hard for, college, for any team. I don't care if you're playing lacrosse, your, your jump rope team. Once you get in, I got enough footage on you. You start creating tendencies, and that's why they build tendency cool. charts. So I'm just saying, Colorado technically didn't have tendencies, concrete tendencies, until they start getting into game four, five, six, seven. Well, 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 well. Last year, if one big mistake that Coach Prime made last year is that he. he Wanted Sean Lewis to change out his philosophy. Sean Lewis was sixty uh, percent passing, four percent running. Okay. Coach Prime wanted Coach Prime wanted to be eighty percent passing and twenty percent running because he tried to promote his son, and that was the downfall right there. That wanted that was a nail in the coffin right there that that, that separate those two right there, and that was where Ryan went when, when, when he had a game. Game when it was with the uh, 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 Arizona, Arizona, when it went to Arizona, Arizona State. They won that game. That was their fourth win, but that was the nail in the coffin right there. And that was, and then it, it, it was going downhill ever since then. Smiling downhill. Yeah. yeah and, so and, and, it go back to what I said. It go back to what I said later. Coach, Coach Prime is a, he impersonated a coach. He's not really a coach. He's a impersonated coach. He's not really a coach. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's kind of like Trump. Trump is a, Trump not really a president. Trump is a, 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 a impersonator, big time impersonator. That's what I was co pioneer both of my impersonators. They impersonate someone that they shouldn't be. So let me ask you this, because I'm a little confused. Are, are you a Colorado fan, Coach Prime fan, or what? Well, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm more, I'm more of a Georgia fan, Florida State slash fan. I'm an old school type Florida State George, Georgia Bulldog fan. Uh, okay, but I'm talking about in but reference, believe, but, but I'm talking about in reference to Colorado though. I like Colorado. What you doing? I like the I ain't really name a team, 
But I, I like I, it's, it's, it's a lot of interest watching them because it's a lot of it's, it's a lot of stuff going on. I like to see, you know, it's a lot of what you call creativity, a lot of uh, you know, a lot of uh, action, or, 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 or what you call it. It's, it's entertaining. It's, it's it entertaining. is entertaining. It is entertaining. Yeah. And, 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 and I like when a man put his foot in his mouth, and then if you go if you go put your foot in his mouth, you got to do something. Put his foot in mouth in what way? He said they gonna go to the playoff. Get a, uh, 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 go to, they gonna go to the playoff. I want to see that happen. Put your foot in your mouth. Do it. This ain't not a Jackson State man. This is not a Jackson State. You dealing with the uh, you dealing with Division One football. This ain't Jackson. You got the powerhouse out there now. You got Georgia, Howell State. You got the powerhouse out there. So you can't say you gonna go to the playoff. What was you gonna go to the first game? Uh, uh, one and done. You know. We gonna find yeah. out, man. But 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 Biggie, right? I would. The reason I'm a little confused. I, that's why I ask you, because I remember the last show. You know, we were talking about Shador and all of them going to Dallas, and then this one, you talking about Coach Prime. He like an imposter. So that's why I was kind of confused because I thought you were a, a Prime fan or a Colorado fan, and then today it sounded a little different. That's why I asked. I, I am a Prime fan, but I'm for what's right, and and I think that. As I keep watching quite a lot of content, I keep watching what go on. I think it's a lot of favoritism going on in Colorado. Never a lot of players come there think they're gonna they're gonna shine, but they want to leave it. Mm. It's a lot, a lot of favoritism. It's certain players on that team get favored more than other players. When that's everywhere though, baby. That, yeah. Bro, that's everywhere. Can I don't care what nobody say. That's everywhere. Every I don't care. That's at your job with your kids. That's it is. That's everywhere. So I I hear what you're saying, I hear what you're saying, but favoritism is a real thing, right? Now some coaches can be stubborn enough and have and their favoritism get them losses, but their favoritism right. can get them win. But it could get them wins too. Like I had some kids. I listen. I had some kids on my team that I really like. No Diddy. I do that right, but their talent level wasn't up to the kids that I had. Some kids I didn't write like if I was their age, we probably wouldn't be friends. But their talent right. level was right. higher. Their talent level was higher. So it is what it is. Right. But but I'm just saying. I'm just simply saying. I get where you're coming from. But at the end of the day, <laughs> there's favorites everywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, look, 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 look over here. You got to. We got to realize this here, man. There's a reason why Coach Saban won six national championships or seven, really. There's a reason why he won that many championships. Because he believed in putting the best player on the field. Well, he believed in putting the best players on the field. And if, 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 you can't say, well, my son, I, I'm a member of the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, this club here, and my son, for that, he's going to be quarterback. You can't tell they're saving that. Gotcha. They're saving going, he started a lot of black quarterbacks with his team. Gotcha. In Alabama at that. In the great state of Alabama. He put the best players on the table. But when the last time you seen uh, 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 a quarterback that went to Georgia was very talented? Justin Fields. He never did get a shot. He never did get a shot on the field with Georgia. Well, it was hard for him to play over uh, Jake Fromm at that particular time now. Jake, Jake Fromm would have been, been better than Justin Fields. He didn't get drafted. Bro, but, Fields, but Jake Fromm Fields just went to the – but he had just went to the natty. Come on, dog. I, I hear you. Listen, Biggie, I got another call in here, 5077. Give me one second. I'm coming to you. And I hear where you're coming from. But Jake Fromm right. – but, but Jake Fromm, again, I, see, a lot of people make this mistake in my opinion. They like to take college and project it to the NFL. The college coach does not care. I, I hate to say this to y'all. The college coach doesn't care about that kid's NFL future. Yeah, he wants that, but he's not going to play a particular kid the way he thinks the NFL is going on to see him play. He's going to play that kid that's going to help him win ball games. I hope that makes sense what I just said. Right. He's not worried about yeah, yeah, yeah. how the Detroit Lions play. Oh, man, I got to get Jake Fromm to play like this because he may be going to Detroit. And they coordinate like when they run these particular plays. Man, these people are trying to win games themselves. 
So I get where you're coming from, but and that's another thing. But uh, I appreciate it, man, Biggie. Thank you so much, brother. Okay, bro. I got. We got you. Anytime, man. That's Big E from the ATL, right. man, calling in. Appreciate it. Uh, real quick before I get to 5077 coming to you. Dre says, Coach, he threw his players under the bus, bro. No, no, I agree with that. Um, But again, run, listen, one thing about it, you run your ship how you want. I disagree with that part, right, Uh, with, that, with the, the way the old line kind of got put out there. There are ways you do it, right? Just because you can doesn't mean you should. And just because things are true, it doesn't always have to be said a certain way. And I had to learn that. I've been learning that because I've been eating my sandwiches. I've been eating my sandwiches. Shout out to Really Flawed. Fafo, if I said that correct. Coach Hayes, smooth. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. All right. 5077 in the building. Call or talk to us. Give us your name, where you're calling from, and uh, what's your thoughts? Hey, hey what's up? This is this Chris, man. I'm calling from San Diego. Chris from San Diego, man. Talk to me, man. Never been to California. I got to get that way. What's up with you, man? Is this an All right, man. real quick before you go? Is this an a, a do you believe what's going on with the outside football stuff? Is it is it attracting talent or do you think it's a distraction to the current players? Uh, first off, uh, Coach Hayes, I, I love your show, man. I love your insight. I love your look at it um, you, coming from a coach's viewpoint. Uh, I think it's uh, attractive two players um i think um dion has been doing this since he started since he created prime time he's been having naysayers say stuff about his gold say stuff about his the way he plays the way he goes about things but they never knew who he really was mm -hmm. and uh and he's doing things different than other people 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 keep talking about Nick Saban. Nick Saban bought and had all the best players. He didn't create nothing. He didn't do nothing different. People keep going back to that. <laughs> okay. Dion's doing it different. And it his whole life, everything he's done that people talk crap about worked out. And okay. and I'll tell you one funny thing is the well off media, the reach to people, it has turned into the new Cosby show. I can't wait to get home and watch these shows if the shows don't come on that day i'm depressed you know what i mean i need to see it like it is amazing what he's doing he's putting people on everyone's getting paid everyone's coming up around him this is what he does all right man what's your name That's again what brother what's your name again yeah chris San Diego. chris 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 all right chris um First of all, I, I know you were just talking, but don't be depressed if you don't see a well-off media video. Go just come watch Coach Hayes. We got you. Not depressed. I'm just mess just, I'm just messing with depressed, you. I'm like, just messing with damn, you. Damn, dude. Like, it's not on, man. Damn. I'm just messing with you. All right, here's my question. Prior to the Colorado movement, were you a college football fan? Were you a, Did you have a particular team or what? Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm from Hawaii, so I'm, I've always been a Hawaii fan forever. I paid close attention. But uh, once Devin Dion Best. came in... <laughs> yeah yeah i can't uh, once I, I love seeing people build something from nothing okay and that's what he's doing i love to see it all right so you said it's an attractive it's, a, it's attractive for talent and stuff coming in um and i'm gonna ask you some questions because it's really nobody else on the line which is cool because i want to spend some time because i think you got a a uh interesting viewpoint here yeah, go ahead. When you look at when you look at Colorado, what were your thoughts coming in be, prior to the season happening? What what were you thinking? Uh, I was thinking, man, like I would like especially against TCU, the good loss, which there's no such thing as a good loss. But I was like, keep it close. I always know Travis Hunter is the best football player I've ever seen, ever play. I knew he was going to do his thing, and I was just hoping. I knew they're building, so I knew that year was going to be kind of rough. But Dion, it started rough at Jackson State, and then he got into his his mode. And once he got into his mode, that's it. It gets going, and once it gets going, that's it. You know, so I love I love seeing the build. Okay, so now after you saw year one go by, now year two comes in. What 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 are you uh, anticipating or expecting for year two? 
Year two, I see a balanced offense, an aggressive defense. It's going to turn into the normalcy we see from big-time schools. Um, and he's going to continue to get the best players like Nick Saban always got. He always got the best players. He's the best recruiter in the world, you know. But now Dion's going to get those. Nick Saban quit. These other these other coaches can't handle this type of this type of recruiting, this type of NIL stuff. But you know who's still running it? Dion. Yeah. Everyone else that people talk about dropped off. Can't handle it. Dion's still going, just like he's always been doing. Okay. What do you think if you had to pick both sides of a coin here? Offensive, not offensively, positively, or things that you you really like and you think they should continue, and things that you say, you know what, maybe year one that didn't work out as planned, and they should maybe pivot or change course a little bit. What would be those two things? I, I think uh, the one thing would be they already did it, which was to change the offensive coordinator. Not saying that he's a bad offensive coordinator; it just takes a long time to earn that. I mean, to learn that type of offense they got uh an offensive coordinator that can can just do the balanced offense which that was number one they did that and then number two is getting on in those trenches and they're they're fixing that so once that's happening then you're going to get a balanced offense an aggressive defense more recruits coming in and we get to see the well-offs the reach the peoples these podcasts like yours and others talk about it and break it down and uh, I see him winning big. I see him going big. You know, if they don't go to the championship this year, you know, they're going to get the championship next year. Just like Dion said, you better get me now last year. All right, real quick, man, as we got more callers that have called in, uh, I'll just ask his last question. Um, I think I kind of heard what you say, but what would you, what, would, what, what do you see the record prediction being here? Just way too early. Nobody's holding it to you. Just, the way too early record prediction. I think the worst case scenario would be eight wins. Uh, best case scenario is winning the, winning the conference and going into the playoffs. Uh, that's still not negative. People are going to say it's negative that they didn't win a championship, like Dion said. Mm-hmm. But Dion's always going to say that. He's always going to say championship. So uh, I think uh, the normalcy that people talk about, the Nick Sabins and the basic stuff, they don't let you see the team. They keep everything hush-hush. They pay them under the table and keep everything clo- in the closet. Dion is transparent. Everybody wants someone who's transparent, and he's being absolutely transparent, and people still got negative stuff to say. Okay. La- I did say last question, but this is like because you brought up something I did want to ask you and I forgot. Do you believe that being as transparent as he is, do you believe that creates a target on his back? Of course, yeah. There's going to be a target on Dion. There's going to be a target on players. But what would Dion? What would Dion say? He would say, "Do you want that target on you or not?" And if you say, "I don't want a target on me," you're not the type for the team. You're not the type of player. Dion's always been targeted in NFL and in baseball. Well, they stopped targeting him in the NFL because he he proved them wrong, and in baseball. He's always been targeted, and he always stepped up to the plate. Okay. Well, I appreciate it, man. Chris, Chris, Chris from San Diego, man. Thank you for calling in. Sonny, this is your first time calling in. Yeah, man. Yeah, thanks for that, man. Yeah, man. Well, guess what, man? Don't be a stranger. Come on in and call through anytime we open, baby. For sure. Have a blessed day. You too, man. All right, man. Chris from San Diego right. has some good points there. Um, He said the Cosby. He said, like, watching the Cosby show. I just want to know who is Rudy. Huh? Who's going to be Rudy? Baby! Baby! Y'all know what I'm talking about. If you real Cosby watchers, y'all know what I'm talking about. Shout out to uh, Ray Charles. 1961 coming to you next. Call it real quick. Give me one second. Uh, I just saw somebody put something. I, I, I don't know why I address these, but I like to address them because sometimes I don't know if you're actually talking to me. JJ Stallworth says it's never fair to say all coaches coach Hayes. How about a lot of coaches? Maybe prime is the exception. Uh, all right. I, I can take that. Sometimes I do say all, but I've always, always said nothing's a hundred percent. So if I do say all, I'm probably not really saying all I'm probably saying the majority or a lot of 
All right. And I always say this, the exception is not the rule. And most time, most people try to compare the rule to the exception. And that's where the problem lies. But thank you for that stalwart. All right. Let me go to 1961 <clears throat> in the building. Call and talk to us. Give us your name. Where you calling from? What's your thoughts? Attraction or distraction? Coach Hayes, this is JR Boxing. What's going on? Coach? JR Boxing, man. What's up with you, brother? Oh, nothing, man. Haven't called into the show for a while. I figured I could call in. Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate it, man. I thought I, I, man, I thought we weren't friends anymore, man. <laughs> no, Coach. Uh, but uh, to answer your question, I mean, I, maybe a little bit of both. You know, I don't know. If I could put a percentage on it, I'll probably – let me just split it down the middle, 50-50. You know, attraction and distractor so all right well the poll uh, the poll is kind of, listen the poll is kind of with you right now we have 158 votes and 49 oh it just changed 159 votes 50 50 attraction distraction they have 50 50 right now so even the people agree with yeah. you so talk to us yeah definitely right down the middle you know there's there's uh detractors to to showing everything you know you're putting the eyes on on the coaching staff, you're putting the eyes on the young men, but there's lessons to be taught in all the uh, information that they're putting out. There's lessons to be taught to the young men that's in that program with all the information that's been put out and how the way they can handle media and handle uh, back page stories and, you know, uh, articles and Instagram posts and, you know, all the social media outlets, there's ways that can be, you know, things can be taught. Okay. handle you know all the exposure that they you know that they get and then uh the the detracting part from it is you get you know you get the fans you get the the what if stuff where's kamani or what's happening with this or why isn't this happening this way because especially in the black community everybody right right we all right there's 10 ways to skin a cat and each time we skin that cat i gotta be right my way is the right way right Okay. So, uh, you know, just just for the <clears throat> the casual fans and things like that, it's just a good a good way for for us. I think as casual fans, I think it's a good way for us to just see insides of a program. A lot of people don't know the ins and outs of a program. What what happens daily when it comes to academics of a student athlete, or the way they practice, or you know, the way they uh, hang around and the camaraderie that these teams have. A lot of people don't get to see that. A lot of people's never experienced that mm -hmm. on a, a high level. So it, it's you know it, it's a bit of both fifty fifty. You know, I got you. And, and 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 I guess like I said earlier, I guess I call it my monologue that I don't want people to think that other teams are not doing this. I tell you, I work in a middle school. Exactly. I got twelve year olds. I don't know where a twelve year old got a diamond tester from. He probably got it from his older brother <laughs> that's in the middle school. I mean, that's in the high school. Because they saw it on TikTok. Exactly. They saw it on Instagram. If you don't think somebody at, since they like to bring up Nick Saban, Alabama, Ohio State, Miami, UCLA, USC, has a diamond tester to check somebody diamonds because they're probably real cheap on, on, on Amazon, probably $30. They're not, they're, it's not a real expensive piece of equipment just to have fun with. You know what I mean? Exactly. And so, but the difference is, the window has been open. I keep saying this because they film it. The window is open into the Colorado house. Unlike other house. Like we don't know if the kids at FIU doing it, they probably doing it too. Right. But we will never know exactly. that unless one of them posted on their social media or something to that effect. And so those are the things that's, that's all I'm just simply saying, man. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm the same way. It's, like I said, it's, that's why I say I'm 50-50 on it because mm -hmm. the court of public opinion is, boy, that's that's a tough one, right? So everybody has to be right in their own opinion. But, you know, you just have an opinion whether uh, whether it's wrong or right, but you enjoy the content that's being put out. So people <laughs> watch the content. I'm not going to go as far as saying it's a Cosby show or anything like that. <laughs> but, you know, we watch the content. And you get what you want to get from the content. Everybody sees something from a different point of view, you know? So, and I guess the biggest uh, thing is too, JR know, Box. JR, here's the thing I'll say Callers, I'm coming to y'all 1435 and 3672. I'm coming to you.
But I wanted to say this last piece. Like like Coach JB, the Coach Jason Brown that does his show, I think it's called a J, Coach JB show with Smitty. Would you agree by having these videos, you are painting a target on your back and every day you post these kind of videos, the target gets bigger and bigger? Would you agree or disagree with that? Oh, absolutely. You know? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Just from an athlete's mindset, like, I'm going to I'm gonna try to knock you off of whatever pedestal that somebody else is holding you up to. So, you know, a lot of fans hold see you in a high regard. I, you know, I don't, I don't know why they really haven't, you know, done anything. But I guess the statue of uh, Deion Sanders, cause, Deion Sanders, because a lot of us in our community, we have a great respect, you know, for him. Sure. Uh, but absolutely, there's a target put on your back. So, okay. Uh, these other young men from other programs, they watching, and mm. they probably got that check mark, you know, checked off on their schedule. Oh yeah, we. Oh, we about to show him, especially once the door did his, you know, his whole ice the wrist out thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, how many players from Stanford iced his wrist out? And then, you know, when they lost, it just, you know, it's a part of it. So, right, right, right. I get uh, it. That's why I say, you know, it, it's good and bad with showing everything, but it, it's a part of it. So, it's an experience that these young men that, you know, that they're going through and hopefully they enjoy enjoying the ride and, you know, taking it for what it is. But, uh, yeah. I agree. Got a cool exit a little bit. That's all. I appreciate it, man. Well, let me push on here, man. But thank you, man. Don't be a stranger, dog. Come on, man. I need you to come throw some jabs at me every now and then, man. JR Box. <laughs> all right, coach. All right. I'll definitely hit you up when the season just started for sure. All right. Appreciate it, man. Hmm. All right. Real quick, man. We got a dono in the building. I'm coming to you next. Um, 1435. Uh, let me see. We've been doing this for the 499. Thank you. Says Colorado hired Sanders in December. By spring, the football team posted its highest term GPA in program history with a cumulative. Let's say that right. 2.932 GPA. Well, guess what? We've been doing this. Thank you for that information. And I'll take that information as fact. Right? I haven't fact checked it. So I'll just take that as fact. And that's congratulations to Colorado, man. So you know, like I said, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for the four ninety nine. All right, fourteen thirty five coming to you. Call to talk to us. Give us your name. Where you calling from? What's going on, Coach? Yeah, I knew it was you, man. I don't want. I like people to hear Terry for B more. Talk to me, man. What's up, man? These people got to calm down. Um, so. Before I get to your question, let me address this Kamari McLean thing. Okay. Calm down. It's spring. You, you're not going to see a lot of people play, to be honest with you. It could be a soft tissue injury. It could be a lot of things. It don't mean nothing. When You'll see – I bet you when fall camp start, you're going to see a lot of Kamari McLean. He's going to be around. All right, so Terry. You got the measurables. All right, so T for B. So, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna ask some questions now. Because mm -hmm. Chris from San Diego, I'm just asking. I'm just talking. Chris from mm -hmm. San Diego said that Coach Prime is transparent. Fair, or unfair. Like did he said that right? You agree with that? No. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So why not be transparent about Kamani McLean? Like why not just say? You know, hey, he's not here uh, due to soft tissue injury. We're working through it. Um, because here's the funny thing. I may be wrong, but I think everybody has been accounted for, whether they're out due to injury, whether they're like, for example, Jimmy Horn, right? Everybody knows Jimmy Horn was hurt. Everybody knows this player is getting surgery. Everybody knows that. So why is it so quiet and hush-hush with him and the only reason I'm asking you that is because I'm just I'm just posing questions here, some thought provoking questions for when people say like when people give all of these different reasons for why Kamani's not even on footage or film at practice, but yet, like Chris said, Coach Prime is transparent. I'm just asking because Coach Prime is a genius when it comes to marketing. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. Come on, bro. Mm -hmm. 
come on, man. Now, I don't give him a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of kudos on the coaching side. I think he do make a lot of coaching decisions. But okay. when it comes to marketing and advertisement and creating drama that mm-hmm. ain't drama, you can't beat him. He too he, he too smart, man. He know what he's doing. They it's they are, <clears throat> they are literally got to be cutting him out of certain shots, and it's on purpose. And if it was a real thing, though, as emotional as these kids are right now, he would have been took to his Twitter. Or, or posted something crazy on Instagram or went live and slipped up and said nothing, said something. So I already know that this is this is all marketing. You're not going to see Kamani doing spring for whatever reason, and it, it could be a, a multitude of reasons that he's not there, but they're purposely not showing him to create some type of buildup and triumph story for this kid. Okay. When When – when he come out swinging and we <laughs> see him going fall ball, we're going to be like, oh, man, he didn't rose from the ashes. He was never even in the ashes. <laughs> but we're going to put him in the ashes and cover him with dirt and say, oh, man, he's going to transfer all this. He's going to be right back in the ticket thing. Okay. Well, that's interesting, man. Hey, I appreciate it. Let me see here. Uh, somebody says that um, – let me say we didn't know about Slusher, Coach. Okay. All right, appreciate it, Zulus. I would love for Donnie C to call in. Donnie C uh is very um Donnie C said that's cap Hayes. I don't know what I capped about. Sometimes when y'all put things in the comment section, I don't know the context of what you're responding to because some people are delayed. Some people believe this or not, if you're watching this video and you say you paused it to go to the bathroom and come back, you may be five minutes behind, but your comments are gonna come up right now. So sometimes you gotta Give me some context of what you're talking about. But, uh, yeah, man, hey, like I say, uh, I, I hit it. I, I understand where you're coming from. I hear you. I just I just asked the question because um, Chris said that Coach Prime was transparent. Now, of course, Donnie C said Coach Prime never said he was transparent. I didn't say that. I said Chris said that he was transparent. So I just asked that question. That's all. But, no, nah, I appreciate it, man. Let me go ahead and get to these other callers, man. All right, man. Go ahead, push on, man. Do you think? And I do think it is a distraction, though. Just the, mm. just well, we still the, uh, 50, the original 50. question. We still 50-50 in the 172 votes, so we'll check it out. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think it's a distraction. All done. All right, bro. Appreciate it, man. All right, 3672 All right. coming to you. 3672. Call or talk to us. Give us your name. Where you calling from? Hey, Coach A, this is Pierre calling from Jacksonville, Florida. All right, man. Duval. Talk to you, boy. What's up with you, man? <laughs> yeah, I, Coach Hayes, I just, I've been riding with you, man, ever since you did the film breakdown on Derek Fisher. Okay. Well, you're going back, back. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Talk to so, me, man. So, what, so, so, so what's your thoughts? All right. The answer to the question, and I'm, I'm a straddle fans like pretty much most of you guys have on the call. Old school-wise, I think is a distraction. New school, the way football and, and college football and athletics are going, is an attraction. Okay. And uh, the old school way is I, I grew up playing football like most of the college probably on, on here and how we was drilled constantly from when we scored a touchdown, no celebrating. When we had a sack, no celebrating. Just play with class and dignity. And that's been drilled in a lot of our players and a lot of our kids' heads for decades. Now, I could go a little further with the, the slave master mentality, but that's not this type of show. So, hold on, real quick. I want to say that what was the favorite line from the coach when you went and celebrated? What was the favorite line from every coach when you went and celebrated in the end zone? What did the coach tell you? Act like you've been, been here. Before. Act like you've been there before. I was mouthing it while you were saying it. Act like you've been here before. And, hey, and guess what, bro? I've never met you, and we said the same exact thing. And that right there kind of proves what we're talking about. Across this mm-hmm. country, things have been done a particular way. And when he yeah. does it differently, when he does it differently, right? Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, huh? And I'm telling you, I got old school ways in me, and I get it. But I've also yeah. taken my wait and see pill, and, and I'm just sitting back. I'm not here to try to... uh 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 persuade anybody 
to look do anything different anymore. I'm just here posing questions, having a conversation, and I'm waiting and seeing, just waiting to see what's going to happen because it is interesting. It is new. It is different. Will yeah. it work? Yeah. I don't but, know. Will it not work at this I point? Do. I don't know. But what I do know, Coach Hayes is going to be sitting back watching. Yeah, it's definitely. I mean, it's a new age, especially with NIL coming into play. A lot of that has to do with that. Um, my opinion, and it's my opinion only with, with, with Nick Saban, is that Nick Saban, I mean, he held your scholarship over your head every year. Mm -hmm. So you didn't have that scholarship for a full ride for four or four years. So if you don't have that type of control over a player mm -hmm. of that caliber that is getting whatever – six figures or whatever, an NIL deal, and he's taken care of, and now he's got to listen to a coach jerking his, his playtime because he's not doing his footwork right or the, or the, or the minute things that make you a champion, mm -hmm. you start losing control, right. especially with younger kids. It's not the NFL. You know, even in the NFL, I mean, Nick Saban was there and he came back. I look at it as a control issue. You can't, you can't tell a grown man he can't do this or he can't play after the, the franchise has spent millions of dollars on this player. And now because the coach has a personal vendetta or whatever it is, a, a, a disagreement and he's not playing. Well, coach, we just spent X amount of millions of dollars on this player. We need to figure out a way to get him on the field and you need to figure out a way to communicate to him to do what you need him to do on that, oh, at, listen, at that moment. I, I'll just say this to you, man, if I push on, bro, you're not wrong. NFL yeah. is a totally different beast. NFL is a totally different yeah. beast. Uh, the coaching is different. The the culture is different. Um, and, you know, for example, NFL, you've made it, right? In the yeah. NFL, as a player, you have made it. It is your job as a player to stay. It's your yeah. job. Nobody's, listen, nobody going to sit up there and make sure you work out in the summer. Nobody's there to make right. sure you work out in the offseason. That's up to you. When, when, when OTA start, you better be right. But you get moved on. It's just that simple. I mean, so it yeah. is a true profession. You know, uh, college, there's a lot of developing and so forth. Well, it yeah. should be. Uh, that's kind of changing with the whole transfer portal NIL. But, I mean, development still goes on. Even if a guy comes from a G5 and goes to a Power 5, or now it's Power 4, he has been developed at some form of fashion. So, no, I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. But, man, let me push on to our next caller, man, and see what we got going on. Yes, sir. Great talk to you. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. All the way from Duval, 3672. Oh, no, that's you. 6933 coming to you real quick. Attraction has taken over distractions, 52 to 48 with 180 votes. 180 votes, 52 to 48 with attraction, meaning people being attracted by the things they see, the diamond testing, the cyber trucks, all of those type of things. Shout out to 305 in the building. We got 305 people in the building. Y'all know I'm from the crib. I'm from the 305, so every time we get 305, I just like to say that. I'm bad. Anyway, I know y'all don't care. Y'all want 303. That's how you got to do it, 303? Instead of 305, it's 303? Come on, man. I'm going to put that on the shirt. 303. Anyway, let me get to <laughs> Let me get to the next call, the 6933. Call to talk to us. Give us your name. Where you calling from? And what's your thoughts? Coach, Coach, this is Joe. I'm calling from Montgomery, Alabama. How you doing tonight? I'm good. Joe from Montgomery. Talk to me, Joe. Yes, sir. Well, honestly, you know, people got to remember. It's an attraction, you know, because people got to remember. Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, been at this thing for over 30 years. So everything that he allows to release is calculated. Well, if you if you think about some of the stuff that he's doing now, he knows that after the spring, there's going to be a whole lot more kids in the transfer portal looking to find somewhere to go. So the perp they're purposely have you have you kind of pay attention. They're purposely putting this stuff out there because even today, well, I've had a video about the guys getting out their cars and stuff for, before practice and stuff like that. It's like they're kind of carefully putting this stuff out there to let these other kids know that hey, listen, there's opportunity here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to give y'all the opportunity to make NIL money, not collective money, but NIL money to put yourself in a position to make your own money. And that's going to be the draw. Because a lot of these, and then if, you, if you've been paying attention, because I know you have, Coach, a lot of these um, collective deals, a lot of these kids are discovering that 
they're not just getting a free check. Some of them are signing bad deals in these uh, these collective money deals. And so a lot of them are kind of looking at that and saying, whoa, like they're going to give me a million dollars, but I know they're going. some of them are going to be expecting something back from that million. You better. Let me and ask so you this. Going- Ain't nobody pay. Let me ask you this. I don't know what you do for a living, but whatever your salary is, your job expects you to work it. So ain't nobody, mm-hmm. ain't nobody gonna give you a million dollars because you play football. You play exactly. football is why we offered you a million dollars, and we're gonna want something for it, whether it's signings, uh, appearances, whatever it is, percentage. Mm-hmm. But yeah, ain't nobody gonna give you a million dollars because you can run, catch, and tackle. They give you a million dollars because, because you can run, catch, and tackle. But I want some. So why they just ready for a check? But we're we're being we're Dion's been preaching for so long now. He's saying, listen. You get that money, you're going to have to pay something back from them. But if you work with me, I'm going to put you in a position where you can get deals from companies that are just going to pay you. And that's why, if you notice, even in his well-off videos, a lot of the players that they show, they're branching off with their own YouTube channels to promote their own products on their channels. Right. And so it's like he's putting them in the position to promote themselves. And a lot of these other colleges, they're going to have to catch on because after a while, they're going to, they're going to get tired of writing all these checks to these kids that don't pan out. Correct. And you know what's coming down. You know what's coming. At one point, they're going to try to come up with something because especially Texas, I think with the Texas A&M, they gave up so much money last year and then a lot of them kids transfer after that one semester. Mm-hmm. It's like these, these schools are going to start looking to protect themselves. They ain't going to keep just giving away all this money and it's gone after one semester. Right. Well, I'm with you, dog. Like I said, I appreciate so, you, man. But I, I, got a, I got about seven, eight people back there. But yeah, go ahead. Say your last piece. Oh, but yeah, yes, sir. So it's just, it's just a tricky situation right here with college football. And you're going to see a lot more of this continually happen. Watch, watch it after all these spring games are over with. I think what the, uh, as the portal open next week, you're going to hear about a bunch of kids leaving. Out of certain programs, you're going to be like, why are they leaving? <laughs> and it's, it's sad because a lot of these kids are going to get stuck in that portal because a lot of them aren't as great as they think they are. And so the whole situation is going to be, it's just going to be a tricky situation. And it's going to be interesting to see how all this stuff plays out. It is. Like, I, I'll just say this before I move on. Google man in the building, uh, like Savion Washington, again, it hasn't been reported officially, not since I last saw it, that he's going to enter the transfer portal. Like, what? Would, why would he enter the transfer portal when he has a – he can play. He, he would be playing, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, why would he enter oh, the yeah. transfer portal? Like, where, where do you think Savion Washington would go and play – once he leaves Colorado versus being a, why not be a starter for Colorado? He started last year. Why not be a starter this year? Like, you know what, that's where a, do you think he's going to go? That's a great question. But you, you and I both know it went surprises that some of these teams were already reaching out to him before he made that decision public. So, you know, there's a lot of things that's probably going on behind closed doors that we don't know, you know, but that's 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 a great that's a great question. I would love to know where he'll end up playing if that's what he decides to do. And the only reason I say that because if you look at the transfer portal for guys that leave Colorado, um, I think the bigger school, I may be wrong, but the bigger school when kids leave, I think was Northwestern. I think Northwestern mm-hmm. was the biggest school of people who have left Colorado. I may be wrong, but mm. Hold on, I'm going to pull it up because yeah. I, I'll just see. But I'll talk about that in the open part. But I think the biggest school for people who have decided to leave Colorado was Northwestern. Hold on. Yep, they left Colorado. Uh, and that was Jack Bailey went to Northwestern. Uh, Kendrick Breedlove went to Purdue. I mean, Anthony Hanker, Hankerson, Oklahoma State. Van Wells, Oklahoma. I'm sorry, Oregon State. Van Wells, Oregon State, uh, big uh, uh, tank, Oregon State. So, mm-hmm. well, wait a minute, Martinez, the yeah. running back, just left from Oregon State. You think they're gonna make a trade to Colorado? We'll see. I don't know, but that's where I am. So that's why it's, it's interesting. Right. And, yeah. and then, like I said, a lot of these kids, especially in the SEC, once after their spring games are over with, they're gonna be looking to transfer because a lot of them know they they won't be starting this year. And so a lot of these kids aren't patient to sit back and wait for the chance. So some of them are literally like, "I'm leaving right now." And so it's gonna be real interesting, I guess, in the next week or so. And we'll see who's all leaving where. Yeah, we'll see. But man, I appreciate it, man. Let me push on. 
All right, have a good one. You too. Thanks, brother. All right, we got my man Google Man in the building. Google Man, what's up with you, baby? What's up now? So uh, I think it don't add or take away from it because you think if you think about it, like everybody doing it, so that ain't a problem. Um, now the old school way, like our boy said, in the old school way is oh, it's a problem, but. And I don't, I definitely don't, I don't think it's going to take away from uh, the situation. Also, the dude, um, one thing to call it back, you know, you said something about the, the coaches back in the days. Uh-huh. Um, about the touchdown shit. So, I was watching this, um, and that right there kind of mom people on. This dude is so funny. Like, man, this dude right here is nice, smack walk. I don't know if you heard him before. He's real smart. He's from, he's from Houston. He bought your way probably a little bit older than you. Um, like, uh, he, 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 he like a podcast actor. Anyway, he was talking about Candace, um, Candace Owens. Um, and he was talking about, she, of course, like, I don't know, I don't know if you know, like, the, the white folk done fired her ass. So all the coons she been doing. And so he was talking about on the show, like, Somebody, I think somebody did an interview with her, and they talking about God, or whatever. And so, and everybody in the hood say God is God is good. And then the next thing they say is what? All the, all time. the time. She right. didn't know it. Correct. She didn't know it. <laughs> she didn't know it. So, so at the end of the day, your black card, you can't get it back, Jack. And with that, 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 that should be fun. Like, like that, 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 that would make me think about that shit. You know, but really talk to do dude named Smackwater, Coach Hain, I swear to God, you will love him, man. Like, bro, he, he, he's smart, but the way, but the way he talk, like, like, you wouldn't know it. I only reason, only reason I know, only reason why I know he's smart because he done said it like before, like, um, I think I think the dude said um he said something like when he when he graduated from high school he he could have went to uh he could he could he could have went to a Ivy League school but uh, he he but he from Houston so he ended up going to um he ended up going to um PV but uh, he 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 really smart though anyway yeah man uh yeah but Deion Sanders no Deion Sanders I mean look. Well, some some somebody earlier said something about um I heard I heard somebody about four four five colors ago to say something like that. Um, this season like he, he might he might go to Tim Tim to or uh, next season, hey man, they gotta slow down, slow down, pump the brakes. You know. That, that's all we got for you. <coughs> oh man, I could hit the mute button. I apologize for sneezing. Oh man. No, you I, I hear you dog. Um yeah, yeah, just I, like I said, tell people to slow down, let the man build it. I said yeah. I'm done trying to stop people from creating expectations. I'm done. If y'all notice the format of this show, I'm just asking questions. I, I'm done. I can't. Yeah. I can't change people's mind. I realize I can't help them see things in a different light, and so I'm just here chilling. Uh, we're gonna have a good time. We're gonna talk about it when things happen. We're gonna react to it, talk about it, ask questions, and that's just how I see it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you work so all right, yeah, man. Uh, all right, Google man, appreciate you, dog. Yeah, as always, right, man. Google man in the yeah. building. All right, man, that's Google man coming to 2684, 2684, and 5454 coming to you next, right after that. Uh, 2684 coming to you. Call or talk to us. Give us your name. Where you calling from? What's your thoughts? How you doing, Coach Hayes? My name is Alan from Philly. How you doing? Alan from Philly, man. We got to have a talk about Philly, man. I've been watching some video, man. Y'all got to clean the city up, man. Y'all got all them people out there on the block just stuck, man. What's up with that, man? Yeah, they trying to, the mayor here is trying to get, it's clean, clean, trying to get the street cleaned up. And That's everything. crazy, and man. She's trying to, like, get everything cleaned up here, but, like, she's trying to start with the crime and stopping frisk balls and everything like that, but that's wild. I don't know. But anyway, man, <laughs> talk to me, man. What's up with you, brother, man? What's your thoughts? Do you think this I is feel, an attraction I feel or a distraction? Like the, I think it is a distraction because I noticed when Prime Dion was on Jackson State, he was more he was more humbler. Like he 
he he like went like I saw the video today. They were fighting. They were like coming to players and stuff, like tussling or whatever. He pulled the players and said, "No, nah. like, so any one of y'all want to be fighting or whatever, I'll take y'all off the field and pull the things down." And like you get what I mean? They're like, yeah. But before they did it at Jackson State, they were just kind of like having like he was like, "Yeah, let them get it out, let them get it out." But I feel like ever since he left Jackson State to get to Colorado. He kind of switched up because he knows that he got the PWI money now, and they suspect more than that they did at the uh, at the HB, HBCU level. And one game I watched, I was watching, I watched several games of Dion one. They did the Colorado State game. They had the guy Rick George. They showed him when they went to commercial break, had a Dion Sanders jacket on. And mm-hmm. opened the opened up his jacket, had be a picture like a package of Dion inside of his jacket. And mm-hmm. I said to myself, I looked at my pops, I said, Yo, they on some quote shit with with Dion. And he was like, Yeah, that's what they want. And I was watching the prime uh the prime documentary. And he came in and said, How you doing, sir? And he's like, I'm good. He was like, I wanna win. He's like, Yes, sir, boss, I don't let you know. And it seemed like to me that Dion is catering more to about it, all he cares more about of his image and his Shador, he cares more about of his about his image and more about Shador on Shador and Shiloh only. Everybody else, if they ain't doing right, he'll let them go. Like when he did with when he brought Kamani on, they were asking questions about Kamani last year. He's sitting there saying, "How Kamani doing?" He's like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. You got to get, get it together. It's up to him. If you want or not, it's up to him. Right. I just feel like mm. him. He put too much pressure on these kids. Like. You got more staff and everybody coming in there with the the NFL talent or whatever. But these kids are trying to learn. They're going to learn from you. But you put, kind of putting pressure on them when they like, when celebrities and stuff were going around or whatever, they was all happy and joking when they was winning. And then when they lost, he was like, yeah, y'all take y'all big shot right now and everything like that. And don't be going on Twitter when they talk about y'all because y'all deserve it and I don't blame you. Right, like, you 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 know what I'm saying like you telling them they did, but then when they lose, you want them to be humble. Like I remember one thing, one time, a uh, little way asked, he said, "What you gonna do when we come around? How you gonna keep that together?" He's like, well, I don't play, dog. I don't play. You say you don't play, you don't play about certain certain things, but on another hand, you do different. It just it just seemed like he just he just. He's too egotistical, and he's less of he's more of a motivational speaker than a coach. Like you want them to do one thing, but then when they the prop, then we got lose. He think that the kids are too too this and too that. That's just how I feel. I got you, man. Well, I appreciate it, dog. That's your point of view. That's how you, yeah. I mean, you know, everybody got their way they look at it. And uh, I, I totally understand, yeah. man. But let me get into this next caller, man. But yeah, I hear what you're saying, right? And that's that point of view, but that's that window I'm talking about, right? You get an opportunity to look in the window, right? And see what's going on and come up with your own conclusion. And that's what really happens. When you open up those windows, people see it and they, have, they come up with their own perspective on it. And that's just how I look at it. All right, thanks for, thanks for letting me come up, Coach. Anytime, man. Be cool, brother. All right, please. All right, 54, 54 coming to you. But before I do, guys, call on in 862-799-9956. I want to hear your point of view. Uh, I think this is interesting. Uh, like I said, people have jumped in the transfer portal. Um, Miles Slusher uh, jumped in the transfer portal. I don't know where he'll end up. Um, it's reported that Savion Washington as well. And for those that are just jumping in, uh, the, the, the title is, Are the Colorado Buffaloes Focused on Football? And I asked the question, we have a poll going right now, 193 votes. It is 54% attraction to 50, 46% distraction. And the attraction means the stuff that you see, like the diamond testing, uh, the vacations, all of those type of things, are those attractive? to recruits and and transfer players versus is it a distraction to the team? That kind of stuff, the, the, the cyber truck and uh, all of the hype that goes around it. I'm just asking the question. Uh, I clearly have said 
I don't think. I don't. I see both sides of the coin. I don't think it's a distraction because every kid's doing it. I think the problem is because it's filmed, it is now being reacted and responded to, just like we're doing here today. Donnie C, I would love for you to call in, man. Please, you be coming in giving a business. I would love to talk to you. Somebody says, what do I think? Oh, matter of fact, hold on. I'm sorry, caller. Please call in. Coach Cali Sports Talk. Please call in. Uh, I would love to have you come on uh, and talk on the show here for a second. I think you left a comment not, not long ago. And I can't remember what the comment was particularly, but I remember you left a comment a while ago. And uh, I would love for you to call in, man. 862-799-9956. I'd love to hear your point of view. 5454, come to you. Call and talk to us. Give us your name. Where you calling from? Uh, T. Wilkes out of Alabama. T. Wilkes, talk to me. Out of what part of Alabama? Uh, Birmingham. Birmingham. All right. Talk to us, T. Wilkes. Uh, I, got, I think it's a attraction for the players he get. So, to me, you really ain't. I don't think it's attracting big, big, big name players. You know, you might get one here, but I think you you getting exactly what you get for all that. Because look at the players. You know, I ain't seen no big time player. You got one out of that out of that whole year. So I think it get, it, it attracts what it what it's supposed to attract. Some players like it, some players don't. But I think all you like your big time players. They go in other schools. All right. That, what a, that's just my thought on it. But oh. my whole thing is you finna get ready to go in the Big Twelve where they where they run that ball like 90 going north. <laughs> and if you don't get some big time linebackers, I don't see them winning no more than three, four games again. because man, you talking about bringing a they look just like the Dallas Cowboys. They're using safeties for linebackers, and that don't match. I, that, that, that's just me now. But if, if, if you don't get some big-time linebacker with that attraction, you're going to have big-time problems this year. So that's me. That's just my thought. You yeah, know, I mean, look, like I say, I'm going to sit back and wait. But like I said, I ain't seen no big-time linebacker show up yet. Uh I believe Bentley, if I'm not mistaken, he's there. Uh, Bentley, 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 come on. He big time linebacker. I, I just brought I up a, Bentley get run over. I just brought the name up, bro. You gonna I, have to need more than Bentley. Yeah, I think you gonna need more than Bentley. Though I'm not, you know. Bentley, Bentley started out at Clemson. He transferred. Right. You left Clemson and you were winning championships at Clemson and you and, and, and you transferred, you couldn't get on the field. That tells me something right there. You know, and I go back to this a hundred times. I'm like you on this. If you don't start this thing from ground root with high school, and you, I don't see you getting far. I don't see you lasting long because it ain't enough. You ain't building no kind of relationships. You know, I get it. It's a, it's a, it's a shiny car with a new motor on it, and everybody like it. But man, if you don't start building that motor from the inside out, I don't see how you gonna make it in the Big Twelve and all these in, in these big conferences. Because you got a heck of a schedule staring you in the face. These programs are already mm -hmm. built in the back end. And is they, tough. they got returning players. Yeah, and and, and, and man, I look at like you got nice receivers. You got a whole new constructed line again. A, mm -hmm. a whole new line again. Mm -hmm. Bro, I, I I I like I like the man. I like what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? It's interesting. But when when it's kickoff time, like I say, it's gonna be rough, man. Yeah, the back half you, the, the back half of that come, schedule, in my opinion, is real tough. Uh and, and again, like I said, right? The back half of the schedule is tough. And by the time you it get, is, and by the time you get to that, the back six games, the the six games on the back half of that schedule, you pretty much start working your tendencies, kind of in the you know, you start working who you are. You start you have really shown who you are as a team, offensively and defensively. You know what I mean? And yep. and the back half, like I said, the back half of the schedule is tough. So now 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 the fact that it's tough and they can get your tendencies. 
and work who you are. Are you a pass heavy team? Are you a run heavy team? Are you a quick game team? Are you an outside zone team? Are you a gap scheme team? Are you blitz heavy? All of that stuff will have shown his head by the time you get to game six, seven, and eight. And so, yeah, it, it's going to be tough. And depth is going to be the biggest and issue I'm, for them. Yeah. And I want to say this. When you get to that end of the schedule, you're going to know who really there for the grind. The ones who are going to be able to hold up. Mm -hmm. The ones who are going to be, you know, you start having problems. and be like, man, forget this. I'm mm -hmm. tired of it. And when you run into a Gus zone, sweep left, sweep right, coming downhill all night, it's rough, man. I watched Gus Miles on the SEC. He gonna run that ball one left, and he gonna come back right all day long all day until long. you stop it. And I, I, and to me, I don't think their defense have beefed up enough to handle the Big Twelve. This is not the Pac Twelve no more. This is run heavy. Yeah, heavy. No, I agree with you. Like I say, agree. old school ninety six ball, I formation. Here we come. Can you stop it? Hey. What did it say? Four yards in a cloud of dust. And, you, and I'm going to say one thing. And you got a defensive coordinator who didn't bring his own crew. That's the, that's, that's the fire you, that's the fire you just jumped into. I'm going to leave that. I got to learn you, and I got to show you everything. But that's all I got to say, Coach A. Thank you, man. I love your content, man. Watch you all the time. Appreciate you, man. Thank you so much, man. All, all right, man. Right. Yes, Thanks. sir. Real quick, Gerald D. I'd love for Gerald D to call in one day. Gerald D, another one. He always talking. He don't ever want to call in. Put Miami schedule up. Let's dissect it. Well, tomorrow's Kane's Talk Live. We'll put it up, and we can dissect that too. No problem. But we'll do it mañana. Shout out to the Cubans in the house. All right. Sheila from Colorado in the building. Hi, Sheila. Hey, Coach, how you doing? I'm doing good. Real quick before you get going, we got 199 votes. 53 say it's an attraction. 47 say it's a distraction. What's your thoughts, Sheila? Well, you know, <clears throat> I think it's um, I think it attracts the kids that it need to attract. I mean, it's an attraction for them. But um, the thing that I think we forget is that we're a lot of media while he covers Coach Prime, that's his own personal page. There you go. As, it's not a Colorado football official page because if you look at it and you go to Colorado football, they have all the stuff that you need. I mean, and it's only football. This is his own personal page. So if you go there, you're going to see him at parties, him doing whatever. You're going to see some football content as well. Good point. But most of it is just – and that's what he likes. I mean, we all know that he's he, he likes um, showing his jewelry and showing all the stuff. It's a material kind of thing with him and probably a lot of the other kids with, with the family, for instance. But And that's what he likes to show because that's his page. And so I don't think that's indicative of the entire football team in terms of it being a distraction because they've grown up in that environment and that's what they like. So that's what they show on their pages. Now, for me, most of the time when it comes to that stuff, I'll just um, fast forward through it and watch the stuff that I want to watch and the stuff that I don't want to watch, I don't watch. But for you to um, get on here and quote JB, ooh, man, that just took you down a notch in my book with Coach JB because I, I that quoted, guy right there. I quoted man. him to say what he was talking about. I didn't say – I just – you hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go back. It's two things, Sheila. One, you're 100% right about that's their page. But two, unfortunately, people put Colorado football and well-off media in the same breath. You're right. Well off media is there is really it's the Sanders pages, right? It's, but, it's really Bucky's page. Correct. It's Bucky's page. Right. It is Bucky's stuff. And he really focuses on really what he wants to film in essence, right? That's why you have pregame and uh what's that? That's Uncle Neely. And then you also have what's the other one called? Darius. Uh, Darius. Darius. Right. Uh well, um reach the people. Reach the people. So Maybe from my understanding, I may be wrong. Maybe people watch all of them. Of course they do. But I would assume 
that more people watch well off than they watch maybe the other ones, maybe just as much or a little bit more. I don't know. But when I said that, a lot of people look at well off because they don't ever say, I ain't see Kamani on reach the people. I ain't see Kamani on the pregame show. They always say, I didn't see Kamani on the well off. Like people always reference well off videos. And that's okay. That's a good thing. I'm not saying that. Um, but but you just made a very good point was that that is not the Colorado page. That is Bucky's page that primarily focuses on his dad, his brother, and some other guys around him, right? Exactly. Yeah. And now, when, when people say, well, mm -hmm. you don't know, but he focuses on his brother. Well, if you go to the Colorado page, you'll see all the people on there. You'll see a whole lot more people and players on there than you do on Well Off because he, he has relationships with the people that he put on there. So his his vision, I guess, is, is a lot different than Colorado in terms of what he's promoting and what he's putting out there. He just happens to have access, because his father is a coach, to other stuff um, in terms of football stuff that – that most people don't have, if you will. And so, you know, it's his, it's his social media page, just like your social media page. You put what you want on your social media. Mm -hmm. So, and you talk about what you want to talk on your YouTube channel. That's what he does with his YouTube channel, Well Off Media. It's not Colorado's Well Off Media or Well Off Media Colorado is Bucky's page and it's well off media. So, and he has a whole bunch of stuff on there that he puts on there. So, you know, and I think the other thing is, is that kids are kids and a lot of those kids came to Colorado specifically because they had the opportunity to watch what's going on in Colorado and they wanted to be a part of it because I can guarantee you that if there wasn't any kind of social media, like they, you know, like flooded the market with social media last year, you wouldn't have half of these guys even thinking about coming to Colorado. So it's a, it's a catch 22 in that, yeah, it is a lot of stuff, but you have to know that it's all his own personal decision about what he puts on there and you can go. So if you're not interested in well off and all of that, then go to the Colorado Buffaloes page and get, all the stuff you want specifically for Colorado Buffalo. Coach JB said his old curmudgeon butt up there. Curmudgeon? He just wanted to talk about people. Huh? Cum Did you say curmudgeon? What does that mean? Cum I what, do you, what do you call it? Curmudgeon? You know, like old men that just want to be grouchy and talk about stuff all day and have that. He got, he got one of those old men. I don't want to do wow. that. Wow. Hold on. Hold on, Sheila. Hold on, Sheila. You just taught me something. Cur curmudgeon is a bad tempered person, especially an old one. Curmudgeon. I love it. I'm going to use that for now on. That's the Sheila word. Curmudgeon. All right. I learned something today. And so, you know, it, it is what it is. I, I think that we, you know, like you were talking about, um, people leaving like Savion Washington. Well, he was a starter last year, but if you look at the people that they brought in, there probably was a possibility that he wasn't going to start this year because he's tall. Remember we talked about people being tall and that's not always a good thing because he's tall. He's kind of like on that whole tank thing. I think they were the bookends for that offensive line, and you saw what that resulted in. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to say. Because you say, because see, y'all like to throw stuff at me now, Sheila, and I just want to make sure. Now, you said I I got knocked down a few points because I quoted JB. What did I quote and what did I say? <laughs> I want to make sure I clean well, this I, up. I'm not I think, even I, bringing him up. Like, well, do you agree with Coach JB? And sort of like, well, nice. I think you said, well, I can see what I understand what he's talking about. I just like, oh man, I don't get caught up with Coach J. No, see y'all, but see y'all don't listen. Y'all get so y'all get so mad at the messenger and don't listen to the message. What I said was very clearly because I don't already I don't already lost one of y'all ladies. I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know if Lexus gonna ever come back. Oh, Lexus. 
When you gonna let me ride in a 450 Lexus? I don't know if she ever gonna come back. But anyway, what I was saying was he was bringing up things and I was saying from a coach's perspective, he was talking about putting a target on your back by, by filming all this stuff and putting it out there. That's the only thing I said about Coach JB. That's it. And 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 everybody who has asked has agreed. And would you agree, Sheila, or disagree that by using social media, I'll just say that, do you think this puts a target on the back for the Colorado Buffaloes? Let me ask you that. I think what it does is some people get and and I don't even think it's more in football terms, but in personal terms, some people get um and I'm I'm using this word loosely, um, jealous of the things that they see that's happening in Colorado with some of the players. It's no different than and I don't know if you're aware of the video that I think it was the Southern players made when when he was at Jackson State as it relates to Shadur and, you know, talking about, yeah, we going to cuss him and we're going to beat Joe Bud and we're going to take Joe chains and, and nobody cares about Joe barbecue sauce and you giving out beats. Yeah, I think you're going to have some of that stuff, and I think you have some of that stuff. And then I think from a coach's perspective, because, uh, in, you know, college coaches' perspective, because there were coaches in HBCUs that had vendettas, if you will, against Coach Prime because he gets all the attention. He was getting all the attention. And so, yeah, you're going to have that. Because right, but, no, but what I was saying, like, right, but what I'm saying, Sheila, is, for example, and when, he, when people say put the target on your back, what I'm saying is you kind of give them ammunition. Here's, for example, and I use yeah. this, I know, but, and I used this earlier. The the target on your back. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Right, but uh, but I'm also yeah. Right, but I'm saying the target. I agree. But the target on your back. I agree. Okay, so you also agree with Coach JB then? Not not like the way he for that particular part. Yes. Yeah, it's just what it is. I'm not saying you agree with everything he said. I was specifically talking about when he said put a target on your back because here's why I said that. And again, I was just referencing something that I watched. Yeah. Right? So for all the CU people yeah. out there, and I've been trying to be good. I've been trying to be good, Sheila. Well, Lord, no. Coach, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Before you go there, I'm not saying that you were a terrible person or a hater or anything like that. I'm just, I just, it, it, it just like when with Coach JB, I guess I just, he just old crotchety old white man that that was on a TV show for a junior college football team and think he know everything. And so just hearing his name was like, Ugh, why would you even bring him up? Because well, I watched the show and I made a reference. That's it. That Like, cause see, to me, I don't look at it. I, see, I think for me, I look, it's entertainment. And like, like I, I'm, I don't look at it like, Ugh. Jay, I look at it, I hear what he say, I laugh, I don't laugh, I'll be like, nah, coach, oh, I agree, coach. See, that's what I'm saying. I don't look at him and be like, ugh. To me, I don't look at it well, that way. I brought it up because I saw You're not understanding video. what I'm saying. I'm not, like, what I do is if I see something, and like with JB, and there's, there's a whole bunch of them, so it's not just him. There's a whole bunch of them that focus on trying to make personal attacks on people, whether it's Coach Prime, whether it's people like watching that whole Shannon Shop and Cat Williams, Monique and all them folks. I don't have I, – I, that doesn't work for me in terms of and that, me and my piece of looking at that kind of stuff. So, so Sheila, I don't even watch it. Sheila. I just watched him a couple of times and I saw where he was going and what he does and how he does it. And I decided that I don't watch that. Correct. So and so, and for me, entertaining to me is different than stuff that's entertaining to you. Correct. And so when I brought it up, everybody like, Ugh. but again, I don't look at it that way. It didn't bother. It doesn't bother me either way. Cause the people, everybody, like you said, everybody can skin the cat a thousand different ways. Because there's also a guy on there like Smitty who brings the opposing point, his co-host, that be that that be trying to put him in check. 
So that's why I, I look at it for the banter. I look at it for the conversation. I look at it for all of it. It doesn't, but see, I don't have emotional investment in it either. I look at it for what it is, but I will just say this last piece. I will just let it say this last piece. Um, I don't forgot, doggone Sheila. I don't forgot. That's all right, Coach. But you know, I, I love you. I ain't trying to not too. watch it just because you brought up JB, but that just didn't JB just. <laughs> but again, that's um, it, to me, that's but, it, yeah, I'm not in the emo. I brought it up because I saw it and I just said to the oh, the target. The, oh, this is what I was going to say, Sheila. What I was saying about the target piece before you were, you were talking was what I was trying to say was this becomes ammunition for those same folks. See, such and such didn't catch the ball because all he worried about is this chain reel. And that's the target I think that they're talking about. Like when you put this to, oh, such and such, like, for example, every quarterback is going to have one. It's the reality of life. Tom Brady has them. If Shador has a bad game, uh, he more worried about driving a cyber truck. Then, and now I'm not saying you have to, you or or he have to worry about it. But we're saying when you open the door, people get a chance to see how you run your household. That's all I was saying. But with that being said, I appreciate. I, it. So I agree. I, I I wholeheartedly agree because it's happened before. It's going to keep on happening, and people, you know, you just have to um, go with the flow because I think the thing that Prime with, with Coach Prime. And I think he may have instilled in some of his players is that the outside noise doesn't matter. You've got because if he worried about targets on his back and stuff, do you think he would do the things that he does? I don't think so. So he, I don't think he's worried about that. I think he's just doing. He's yeah, but just being yeah, but him. it's not about That's him. Who he is. But it's not about him more than it's not more about him. Coach Prime can handle it. Can here's my question. Can Caleb Mathis handle it? Can this person handle it? Can that particular? That's all we're. I'm just. I just pose a question. You don't even have to ask. Rhetorical. What we're saying oh, okay. it's not. Um, it's, it's, it's not a coach thanks. prime handling it. It's a. If Caleb Mathis goes out there and he doesn't have a great season, I hope he will. But let's just say he doesn't. He too worried about going to the Shador house and seeing if he got a chain or not. That's that's just what people do. And so that's what. Well, let me let me ask you one question. Okay, all right. Like, what's his name? What's the um, Alabama quarterback? Like all these quarterbacks and all these teams, they don't have the social media stuff. They don't have as much social media as like Colorado is doing with their players. Um, do, but they still got a target. They still, you may not call it a target, but people talk about them just as bad as they would if they had a bad game as they do Shadur if he had a bad game. I agree with you, but the difference is they're not giving them bullets to shoot at you. That's what I'm – you're 100% right, Sheila. The difference is when you do these – and, again, I don't care. Coach Hayes does not care. I'm just telling you why people say targets and what they mean, and I'm talking speaking to everybody else. Yeah. When you give people bullets to shoot at you, because somebody's going to drop a ball. Somebody's going to do this. So that just happens as mm -hmm. life is. And it's part of being an entertainer. Sports figures are entertainers, sports and entertainment, not sports or entertainment. Sheila, you know, I love you, but I got to run. I got quite a few in the line. I got you. All right, coach. Take Thanks. care. Thanks. Baby. I, I Bye. That's Sheila from Colorado in the building. It's my girl. Curmudgeon. I like that. Thank you, Sheila. I appreciate that. All right. Dupree Hundo said, man, it's entertainment in the day. That's it. That's what it is, bro. That's what it is. And here's what I will say. Coach Prime can handle that. He's got big shoulders. He's been through it for decades. The question is, and I guess the question that lies, is can the players, these players handle it? That's the only question. Can they or can they not? I don't know. Not my place to say. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, let me jump to the next. 1951 in the building. Call or talk to us. Give us your name. Where you calling from? Hi, my name is Lisa. I'm calling from South Carolina. Lisa from South Carolina. All right, Lisa. First time caller, right? Okay. This is the first time caller. All right. Talk to us, Lisa. What's your thoughts? Do you believe that the stuff you okay. see is an attraction or a distraction? And then whatever point you want to make. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, I probably want to do the last part first. When Bucky, <clears throat> when Bucky, um, when they first went to Colorado, and Bucky was going to do all the filming, the Colorado side and everything. Mm-hmm. Well, Colorado, Colorado told Bucky that his vision did not align with Colorado's vision. Mm -hmm. That's when, and he was very upset about that. He made it known that he was upset about that in one of his uh, well-off things. So that's how he ended up just doing, uh, you know, his dad's family. So just like Miss Sheila said, if you want to see stuff with Colorado, you're going to have to go on Colorado's page. Everybody's entitled to their own page. Sure. What? What is wrong? Huh? Am I wrong? No, I said sure. No, I said sure. Like you're right. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was. I guess what I was saying was, and I probably came in on the middle part of it, Mm -hmm. is um, other people are not being seen on well off. You know, like people want to see their kids on well off but they're going to have to see it on Colorado side. Correct. Right or wrong. I, I agree with that. But I think for the most, for most people, I think well off is the go-to page for Colorado content. You understand what I'm saying? So I hear where you're coming from. You're not wrong. You are a thousand percent correct, but well off is synonymous with Colorado football right now, more than the other pages. We all know they exist, but well off is, uh-huh is the one, if I type in Colorado football, well-off media will pop up before a Colorado football page does. Does that make right. sense what I'm saying? And that's my only go-to. Mm-hmm. See, and that's your only go-to. So that's the point is because they've done a good job of creating a bunch of content, flooding the algorithm. So when people type in Colorado football, Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, their videos come up first. So I have to. I, I actually just learned Colorado itself the, the university, they have a YouTube page in their filming as well? Yes, they have their own. And so when um, Colorado had a meeting with Bucky and they said that they, his vision did not align with Colorado. So, you know, I guess, you know, because of the music, I don't know what it was because of, but it just said that it didn't align. So that's how Well Off just started just doing um, Coach Prime stuff and following him. And now Bucky is one of the most um, sought, sought after videographers. There you go. I, I take it for what it's worth. Yeah. you Listen, Lisa, like I'm saying, I, I, I hear you and I totally understand. But at the end of the day, um, you know, there's different mm-hmm. pages. All the players they have, well, I don't know if they all have pages, but some of those guys have pages. I know Travis has one. He being his onesie playing video games and doing different things. I know Kamani has mm-hmm. a page where he did some workouts and stuff. And all those guys, I I think it's I think it's a crime if you go to Colorado and don't have a page. Now I know it's not for everybody, but part of the mystique, <laughs> I mean honestly, but part of the mystique and part of why right. everybody says kids go to Colorado is for being seen and having views and being noticed and being recognized. And then you're right there with the marketing genius and you're not doing that. I just think to me, you hustling backwards, but anyway, go ahead. Okay. Um, What I was also going to say, um, coach Hayes is one of the things coach prime said, he wanted everybody on the back of their Jersey to have an Instagram name. So if you ever wanted to look them up, they, all those players have an Instagram page. Good. Yeah, that's a great way of marketing. That's a great marketing tool uh, for you to locate, you know, player number 26 or, you know, a guy that may exactly. not be as famous as the other guys. So you saw a guy, you exactly. saw number 36 make a good play. Who is 36? You know? Right. All right. Well, Lisa, don't be a okay. stranger. Please call in more. You know I will. I love you, Coach Haynes. Thank you so much, Lisa. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. That's Lisa from South <laughs> Kakalaki. 1703 coming to you. Donnie C, I like you, man. You funny. I appreciate you being a subscriber, Donnie C. Thank you so much. 
1703. What's going on, Coach Hayes? Hey, how you doing, brother? How may I help you today? <laughs> hey, this is this, this, this Measy from St. Louis. All right, from St. Louis. Talk to me, man. I'm from the Louis and the Proud. What's up now, with you, man? All right. Now, Coach Hayes, I don't think it's a distraction, man. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you have to create a way to get other kids to come to the program. Before Coach Prime got there, no one wanted to go there. It was a bad job. Uh, the place, people, even previous coaches before he got there were saying they had problems with recruiting. You know what I'm saying? And two, I mean, these are good kids for the most part. You know what I'm saying? You don't hear about these kids having DUIs, getting locked up, breaking people's houses, doing nothing like that. So let these kids have fun and enjoy their life. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. Listen, I'm all for it. I get it. And, they, and the, the thing is, they and are. Like, and I feel, like, I, feel like, I feel like other programs, they got kids getting DUI. They got kids getting locked up, going to jail. That's not a distraction, Coach Hayes? Agree. I totally agree with you. I agree with that. I'm not saying that those are not distractions. I mean, I mean if, you look at, if, you look at, if you look at any other program, every kid that's in, that's in college at, these, at this point, they got chains on. They got jewelry. They, they got nice cars. Look at Utah. They bought the whole program F-150s. Right. $75,000 trucks. Correct. I'm so not, it's, it, it's just it, like whenever Coach Prime, it's like whenever Coach Prime do something, man, or whenever Colorado got something going on, it's always looked at as a negative. Nobody ever wants to think about, damn, where would this program be if Coach Prime wasn't here? It was a bad job, man. He got a job with the studs was on his mother. Like, it was bad. <laughs> no one wanted to go there. It was stripped no to the studs. No one even knew about Colorado. Nobody even cared about Colorado. I agree. So, so, so to yes, your yes, point. Yes, so yes, he has, he has to do things to build a program because nobody wanted to go there. So now that he's there and he's creating and putting a spotlight on the program, it, it shouldn't be a problem, man. You should look at it as, man, these people never had one or two five stars to visit this program in history. Now you got four or five stars want to at least see what it's about. I agree. Here's my here's the thing. You said something about the spotlight, and I'm gonna go back to his quote. The thing is about the spotlight is it when the when the light is on you, everybody can see. They see your greats and they see your flaws. That's all we're saying. I'm not, and I said this before, and I said that I don't know what part of the show you came in or if you've been here since the beginning, but I've also said every other program, kids doing diamond testers, kids got new cars, kids. Uh, so what they're doing is no different than any other program. I've clearly stated that. Exactly. The difference you said, is, a, you, said it was a, you said it was a distraction. I did not. I asked the question. Is it attraction or distraction? See, that's how you perceived it. I didn't ask, was it a distraction? I said, the title says, is it attraction or distraction? All you read was distraction. No, no, no. I'm, I'm going off of what, what the poll is saying. The poll, the majority of people in the poll are saying, it's a distraction. No, and the majority of the people in the poll, could, actually, could, the majority of people in the poll at 53% are saying it's attraction. At 221 votes, okay, okay. it's an attraction. It started off a distraction, and then the attraction right, has that's, beat that's, them that's out. I mean. okay. Yeah, that's probably where I you was, came I, in. I came in when it, when it started off a distraction. Yeah, because I just feel like, man, if you put a program up from the dead, bro, there's no way it can be a distraction from what you're doing because you're, you're getting people to talk about it. You're getting people to... To, to interact with the program, you're getting four and five star recruits that even just come visit. Not saying they're committing, but they're at least visiting. You couldn't get these people to even take a look at, at, at Colorado. Any kids you ask that come to Colorado, you say, why, why, why did you choose Colorado? They always say, oh, it's because of Coach Prime. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, man, people, people was not thinking about Colorado, bro. And people got to understand, this is a way, that he's not Alabama, he's not Ohio State, he's not Michigan. He has to come up with a strategy to make this thing work, bro. And not only do you got people on the inside against you, but now you got other people against you. So you got to do what you got to do to make this thing work, man. And this is just his strategy, bro. And people can't be upset about the route he's taking. And that's and bro, that's before yeah, I, he got there. Uh -huh. Nothing, nothing was being. This program was in the. It was very six feet deep, bro. Nobody cared about Colorado. I agree with you. You're 100% right. There's nothing you said that's wrong. Nothing. There's nothing that you said that's wrong. Right. So, but I'm just saying, when I hear JD and everybody say, oh, they doing this, they doing that, bro, all these kids were changed. 
all these kids work get nice cars. It's just that he's 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 filming it, and he has to. He doesn't have the prestige of an Alabama, of an Ohio State, of all the other other, other schools. You know. Okay, right. I, I'm with you. I agree. So I feel like I feel like another day he's a I feel like another day he's a hustler, man. He's finding a way to get people to come to the program and pay, put attention on the program. Right. So and I feel like a lot of people they don't like it. They don't like the way he's doing it, and I understand it. But bro, when you get something like this, bro, you have to find a way to make it work instead of complaining. He can easily say, "Oh, I'm in Colorado. Don't nobody want to come out here and visit." He can easily just say that, like the other coaches did. Real, real quick, for I'm, all, for I'm, I'm, I'm down there. I'm no, down you good? For you, hang up real quick. Uh, Marcus Burnett, if I'm reading the name correctly, says, "Coach Hayes, you're saying it's a distraction, whether you want to admit it or not, because they showing what others are not, and it puts a target on their back." <laughs> but you can't you can't say something's a distraction when these kids are not doing nothing wrong that's illegal. You got uh, when other programs like Georgia. When they got kids getting arrested for DUIs, is that not a distraction? I agree. When you I'm got just... kids getting arrested for breaking into stores and, and liquor stores, that's not a distraction? These I... kids are only having fun with the money that they were given from the program. They're not selling drugs. These kids are just having fun, enjoying life. That's all they're doing. I agree. And yes, they're filming it because they have to. They don't have the platform that other colleges have. They don't have the prestige of a Georgia and Alabama and all of the programs. So, yes, they have to do something to make it – they have to make a way for these people to see that we are here. That's all I look at as they just showing we here, come check us out, give us an opportunity. Because you know, like I know, nobody really wants to go to Colorado, man. If Coach Prime left Colorado today, we won't ever hear about Colorado again. I agree with that. Yeah, I again, promise you. I, I agree with you. And there's nothing you said I disagree with. And what I read to you was somebody else's comment. And again, that person. No, I'm, again, asking, I'm, asking, I'm asking them, Coach Hayes. I ain't no, no, I know, I know what you're saying, but what I'm saying is, again, this is a, a perfect example of when people look at the messenger and not the message. This is a perfect example, right? Yeah. Right? Like, so, so, I so, just he, feel like people don't have patience, man. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it, and and that's something that I was I was preaching, the patience part, not the not not his first year there. You you so eloquently put it. Nobody wanted to go to Colorado. Nobody wanted to do it. You said all of that, and I agree with all of that. In the first year, everybody yeah, thought. But I feel like these people, hold on, hit me out. Like no, 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 hit me out. I know, but hold on. But with all that was being said, with all that he has to do and fix, people, people put, he going to win 11 games. He going to win the Pac-12. They tried. Bro, Herculean task right there. Now they're walking into a break. Let me ask you a question. Okay, let me, let me just question, hold up, but let me finish this piece. Do, 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 do you blame people for being fans? No, I don't blame people for being fans. What I do is what I was what my whole goal was, and I've said this numerous times, but I'm not doing it this year. My goal when I started talking about Colorado was to say, Whoa, fans, be easy. You're doing too much. You're asking too much of this guy right now because you have to remember he's not playing. This is too much to add. You're asking too much. That was my goal when I started this. Mm -hmm. So I don't blame them for being fans. Where I had a, where I had a disconnect was I thought I was going to come in here and be like, tell them, whoa, Nelly, hold your horses. And they was going to listen. And they didn't. And I got kicked across, right. the, across the street for it. So this year, see, one thing I'm not, brother, I'm not a pain freak. You ain't going to kick me in the behind and I'd be like, oh, big brother, please give me another. No. What I'm going to sit here and do is I'm going to let you live whatever life you want to live and I'll say my piece and I'm done with it. But when he first came, well, because, you, 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 you got to do that you got to do that because okay, you're an analyst. I know, but you got to stand behind everything you say. I, and, so I, I and, and, and the funny thing is, everything I said came true. Yeah. I get where you're coming from. You're an analyst. You, you got to stand on with every word you say. But you can't look stupid. I get, I get that. But, but you got to let the fan be a fan, man. No, I know if that. If somebody that they're going to go 12, 12 and 0, you got to let them believe that. because I learned that lesson, bro. It's short, for, it's, short, it's short for fanatic. If you love Coach Prime, you love Colorado, why not be all in on it? I, a person like you that's an analyst that has to put his face out there for everybody to see it, you mm -hmm. got to be a little more realistic. But it's like me loving to watch WWE. I know Hulk Hogan 
ain't this stuff ain't real, but I'm a fan of the sport. So you you just all you just bought into it. That's all that's all they doing. I get they're it. Buying into what they seeing. But what the problem in what they seeing. I feel like you can't you can't crush a person's hey. dreams and hopes what they have for someone else because they're just fans at the end of the day. That's okay, but but stop right there for a second, because you did a lot of talk stuff for a second. You are again, you are a thousand percent right, brother. But what again, I was trying to help Coach Prime because one thing I know about fans. Fans will turn on your behind. And what will they start doing? Mm -hmm. Fans become what? Evil. Because now you made fans look stupid. Because that same fan go to the barbershop. Yeah, boy, Coach Prime finna be 11 and 1. And come out 8 and 4. And the barber be looking at you sideways. Now, guess what? Because we, really? hold on, we literally saw the fans do this. Right? The first year, they turned on Sean Lewis and Charles Kelly. They didn't turn on Prime yet. They turned on Sean. Char- when Sean Lewis came, oh, my God, Sean Lewis almost beat Georgia. Man, they were, he was right up there with Prime. And as soon as it didn't go the way they were supposed to go, they turned on him. He going to sabotage the program. Sure. He did. But what I'm trying to tell you is I was trying, what I was just telling you, brother, what I was trying to do was ease the pain so you didn't put Coach Prime up here because we know it's people looking to knock him off the pedestal. And I didn't want his idols to become his rivals. That's all you know. Well, I say that wrong, but that, that's all I was saying. But anyway, I, feel it. I, feel I, I gotta push I on, man. Saying, though, and, I, I don't, yeah, yeah. and I'm just saying one thing about Sean Lewis. So you don't feel like that Sean Lewis was doing a little something sketchy there? No, dog. No, Sean Lewis trying to win football. Games. Even, even though even, I don't think even, he even though even though Sean Lewis even though Sean Lewis accepted the San Diego State job in his third game into the season. A lot of people do that. Believe that or not, bro. You know how many times that and, happened, and by, bro. By him, by him not by him not scheming up for the best players on the team like a Dylan Edwards. Dylan Edwards scores four touchdowns in the first game, and he doesn't get added into the into the mix at all after that. You don't they try. Like don't do that. that. Dylan Edwards had was the leading rusher. Dylan Edwards, what do you mean? Come on, brother. See, this is what I'm no, talking I'm, about. I'm, I'm saying when he I'm saying I'm saying when he played TSU, he had Sean Lewis had designed plays for this man. And they After also that, and they also never, caught him off guard. Yeah, no, you did see those same plays. The problem is the more things you put on tape, people can now prepare for them. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. You taking game one, and I said earlier in the show, by the time you get into game three, four, five, you have started your tendencies. You started those things. Come on, dog. If you look at Dylan Edwards, you look at Dylan Edwards. He had he what the leading rusher, or he behind by two yards, him and the other dude. Come on, man! Don't do that. That's this right here. What you, what you I mean, just? I mean, no, I'm saying, no, I'm saying. But I mean, what I you're doing? What you're saying, Coach, I'm just, I'm just saying. I feel, I feel like Sean Lewis. He ain't, he ain't going. He wasn't really, he wasn't really all, all the way bought in. And I'm not going, I'm not going to say he scammed the team or nothing. I'm just saying I feel like he wasn't bought in. But I just feel like why man, would he be bought in? The, t- tell me, t- tell me if the if the offense got your name. Hold on, if the offense has your name on it, and what you do as an offensive coordinator? Because remember, all these guys are always vowing for other jobs. What you do as an offensive right. coordinator follows you. Follows you. What? Why would you think he was not bought? In? I'm just asking. Why would you think he was not bought in? I'm sorry, Carlos. We coming. I feel like he wasn't. <clears throat> I feel like he wasn't bought in because I feel like he took that San Diego State job three games into the season. I feel like he already had a plan to move on to that. I feel like he just was doing this and and he just waiting for the season to be over with so he can move on about his business because he already had an exit plan. So I'm gonna Before say this. I'm, I'm gonna say game, this. He already was ready to get out of there. All right. Okay, this, is, this is my opinion. You know okay, I'm gonna say this to you then. And I'll, I'll, I'm no, you're fine. I'm just saying this to you. I don't know this. This is the first time I heard. How do you know he was? He took the job three day games. In? I'm just asking because I don't know. How do we well, know I that? I read in the article that he was already, that he had already, uh, you know, committed to San Diego State three games into the season. What article was this? Who like who was this? Was it reputable or was it just a, some YouTuber like me? Well, it, it it could be a YouTuber like you, I would say. I so would say. so so there so there right there lies the problem, brother. There lies the problem. Some guy, somewhere, says something, and you're gonna hold Coach Sean Lewis accountable, whether he did or not. I'm not saying he's right or wrong, whoever this guy is. But this is what yeah. I'm saying. This this is the kind of stuff I'm saying. What happening? I, just, I, just, I, just I know. A, I feel like it was a pretty reputable. YouTube, and I'm not gonna put his name out there because regardless, is wrong. I don't want to throw him. On, I don't want to throw him under the bus. Regardless, I feel like this is a really reputable YouTuber, and I feel like he always has good information. 
he may he never like just he may said anything he may or may him, have you know I mean? he may or may have however yeah. Most times when things are true, multiple people report on it. How many other times have you heard that he got that three three games into the season? I've heard it probably about two or three times for other people too. But I just feel like I, I run I ran with it because of this particular guy. Because like it, I, said, I know, but you ran with because it because I, don't know if it's true or not. I know, but I don't it ran. Know. Can I just tell you why you ran with it? You ran with it because sure. he was low hanging fruit. So you don't blame Coach Prime. We are gonna blame the next guy. And this right here is what I was trying to avoid people from doing. It takes time to build mm -hmm. it. So now the narrative is Sean Lewis sabotaged Coach Prime. And so I'm not saying he did or didn't. I'm just telling you how, look how we'll take, we'll take something like this and run with it because it fits our narrative because Coach Prime couldn't have messed that up. He couldn't have did that. It's, it's, it's Sean Lewis' fault. Like, I mean, that, like I this said, that's the issue right there. Coach Prime, so we we ride with Coach Prime right or wrong. That's what I'm saying. So I'm not I'm never gonna blame Coach Prime because but you will, but I'm you I with. know, but you will eventually, and that's the problem with it. No. Let, let, okay, let me ask you a no. question. Let me just ask you a legit question. And I'm sorry, right. callers, but I love this man. What's your name again, brother? What's your name? Measy. Measy. All right, Measy. To me, that's not fair to Coach Prime. That right, wrong, or indifferent, you can still ride for a guy. You can still ride for a guy. But you still have to be open and honest and have constructive criticism for a guy. Would that be fair? You can't just blindly follow because what you do is, that's what happened is, because let me ask you this. As, I hear you riding for him. I hear you riding for him. And I'm with you, bro. Year two, let's just say he goes five and seven. Mm -hmm. Year three, six and six, makes the bowl game. Yay. Year seven, I mean, year four, six and six again, maybe five and seven. Let's just say, I just follow me on this road. Right. Eventually, you know what? You're going to turn. Man, that dude don't know what he's doing. Because eventually, and I'm the reason I'm telling you, because I'm looking at it right now with my own team. I'm looking at it. They on the verge. If, if Mario Cristobal don't win nine, ten games this year, and he come out there and win six games, they going to turn on his ass faster than a flapjack. When he came, mm -hmm. when he came, Oh my God, Mario Cristobal! I think Brandsmar sold out of damn uh, uh, espresso machines, bro. Everybody was buying Cuban <laughs> coffee, dog. Everybody lost their damn mind. They lost their minds, bro. First year he goes five and seven. You know what? Josh Gad, bro. I've seen this movie. Josh Gaddis. Oh my God, he sucks. God. Okay, cool. Second year, seven and five. Huh? I'm just telling you. Yeah. I, mean, I, I I've I mean, seen this you, movie. You definitely, you definitely could be right. I mean, you definitely right, Coach Hayes. But at the end of the day, this, this is a part of being a fan. Yeah. We, I got I got faith in Coach Prime. I dog. got you. And, no, and, I'm not and, saying and, you shouldn't. If he don't make it like like you said, like you said, if you like you said, he, he he uh if you don't make it and people change on them, flip on them, and they wasn't real fans at the end of the day. I'm riding with Coach Prime. At the end of the day, I agree I with like you. He did something nobody else. Nobody else is willing to do. Wasn't nobody else willing to go to Colorado, man. People rather go places where they already got an already made roster. His man had to come from the bottom. Good job. About he got the house. You're down right. The stud, man. You're right, bro. You're right. You're 100. percent But man, Mizi, I appreciate. It. I got to push. You got to respect it. You gotta I respect do respect somebody it. Who, who I do to, respect. Who wants it. to build their own legacy? I re I do so respect. I got to tell you, it. All right, man. Much love, man. Appreciate it. S uh, Seventy. Right. <laughs> Sloan Slaughter. I'm out like the other 35 people. This is a two-way personal call. Well, I tell you, boy, y'all free watching content, boy. Yeah. I tell y'all, boy. Y'all got champagne dreams on a bill budget. Ain't donate nothing, but you got doggone information. Man, get out of here, man. I try, I try to be nice. I try to keep the sound clean. This is YouTube Sloan Slaughter. A two-way conversation. Dip then. Try to be good. Sam's take. What's up with you? How you doing, Sam? I'll go check out Sam. She got a channel. I'm sorry. 7468. 
Call or talk to us. Give us your name. Where you calling from? Henry from Texas. Henry from Texas. All right, Henry, talk to us, man. What's your thoughts on the show tonight? I think it's a uh, attraction. Okay. Oh, real. And I say that because uh, I think um, us as you know older heads and adults, we look at this from a perspective that the kids in high school and junior high and pop Warner are looking at it from a total different perspective. All these kids that are blinging now, Shador, all these other guys with the change and the gold, they put in the work. They put in the work for many years on the average, what, 12, 15 years before they got to this point. Okay. Then they get to this point and these guys say, oh man, these are ballers. We're going to give them some money. NILs or collectives, and these guys go out and do that. They're not out there drinking. They're not out there. We not seeing this part. Uh, they could be, because Coach Palmy. Thank you, brother. Smoking oh, and excuse that, me. But, uh, excuse me for saying that. Thank you. I'm glad yeah. you said that. You said yeah. we don't yeah. see it, right? But that doesn't mean they're not exactly. doing. It. Thank you, because the same way. See, and that's the thing that I, I apologize for cutting you yeah. off, but I didn't want to lose that part. That's the part. Yeah, it's I'm good with, when it fits the narrative. Look, they just kids having fun like every yeah. other kid. They got changed in cars, but they ain't getting arrested. Yeah, you just hit the nail on okay. the head, the narrative. Yeah. Coach Prime came into a system. He had to create a whole new process, and he's controlling the narrative using his son to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody and their mama trying to replicate this in a degree but they don't want to come off as uh you know copying coach prime but they're doing it all these kids at these other schools have their own youtube that they're doing or they on somebody else's podcast so they out there doing it showing themselves but they're not getting a sign that these guys in colorado are getting because prime is controlling the narrative so he says i'm gonna let you come to Colorado and be you. Mm -hmm. If you want to be bling bling, I'm going to let you be you. Sure. If you want to put all this money on the car, I'm going to let you be you. If you want to buy your mama a house, Travis Hunter, I'm going to let you be you. That's exactly what, and that's exactly what he's doing. But then the pundits, JB, since you brought him up earlier, and this, I assume that your question came from his show earlier, that guy is a straight up hater. Okay. He's up. You just talked about Sean Lewis and 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 Kelly on his on the same show you looked at. He alluded to the fact that the reason why they got let go was because it should do it. Told his dad to let these guys go. Now, what kind of crap is that for this guy to say on the program? You know he ain't got no evidence of that, no kind of way. And whoever said it to him in the background, he said one of his coach boys or his buddy said it to him. You know they lying because they hating prime just like he hating prime. So so hold on, let me just say this to you. I, I could agree with that a thousand percent. But again, we only pick stuff that fits the narrative. Just like uh Measy said. Oh, I heard a YouTuber say that Sean Lewis got the job the third weekend. Now I don't I'm, believe that. Oh, I, I don't believe that either. However, I'm not saying I'm not saying they weren't the I'm not saying that oh no, I'm not saying that they weren't in talks. I'm not saying that, yeah. that that didn't reach out to him week three, but saying that he got the job in week three, see, to me, yeah. that's being disingenuous. But, however, that fits the narrative because I need to hate somebody. I can't hold, I can't hate yeah. Coach Prime, but I got to hate somebody. Okay. And so, oh, this dude said yeah. what? He took the job three weeks. Yeah, he ain't ready. He ain't want to be part of Colorado, no way. And you run with it because, okay. hold on, because yeah. you're not being – genuine in that because it fits the narrative on the flip side with jb well, let's go if, the other way i know hold on brother hold on if you flip it the other way with jb just hear me out if you yeah. flip it the other way with jb and what he said in essence yeah. was uh shador got somebody mm -hmm. fired i can't say whether he's right or wrong just like i can't say the other guy was right or wrong however i can say i if, can say he wrong okay that's fine i don't need no evidence of that. okay that's I can fine say he wrong that's fine let me finish i don't this. believe that Okay, that's and fine. You, you as a coach, you don't believe it. I don't, but let me figure this out. Here we go. Here's what I'm going to say to you. But for the people that want to hate, they took that and ran with it. That's what I'm saying. P 
people take any I'm little looking. nugget, any little speck of something, and they want to say that's the reason when it's true, no real credibility behind what they're saying. And they're not I talking agree. of it like an opinion. They're speaking of it in a matter of fact, as if it's a fact. And okay. that's where the problem okay. lies. But go ahead, brother. Well, let's go the other way. Coach Prime did this. This is all his fault. He's a horrible coach. He picked Sean Lewis and and Kelly and put him out there and said, I want you to let my son get hit as much as possible. I want you to tell the offensive line to let that guard through. I want you to let him come in and, you know, do what he's going to do. I want you to let that tackle get through off the edge and take your door. What kind of sense that makes? People wonder, around, well, it's Coach Prime. Prime, Paul, he's a horrible coach. He's a that. The man says, I'm going to let my coordinators coordinate. They're going to call the game. Sure, I'm going to, as a head coach, look at him and say, look, I don't like this. I need you to do this here. But at the end of the day, he said, I'm going to let them call the game. Hmm. So who are you going to put it on? So everybody want to skip over the coordinator that called the game and say, no, this was Prime. Prime did it. He's a horrible coach. So yeah, here's here's yeah, what I'll say. Coach, here's what I'll say to you. Do what I actually do. So I now I got to release you and let you go do what you want to do in San Francisco or wherever you at, San Diego. Okay, but here's what I'll get somebody in here that's going to do what I want them to do. All right, real quick. Here's what I'll say to that. Yeah. Hold on. Here's here's uh -huh. what I here's the only thing I'll say to that. At the end of the day, yeah. I hear what you said. Coach Prime says my coordinators are my coordinators. I I let them coach. Cool. But at the very end of the day, you have veto power. You mm -hmm. have installation power. You have the final say-so as a head coach. Here's where, right. here's where people, again, loosen the reins. Well, he said he's going to let them coach. I get that. But at some point... If the ship is sinking, you got to kick the mate out the sea or you instruct the first mate on what to do. Do you think Did when the, do hold, on, hold on, hit me out. Do you think when the Titanic was sinking, the captain was just sitting in the chair like this? Or do you think he was yelling out orders? I'm sure he was yelling not the ship is sinking. Coach Prime do exactly what you just intimated. I agree. Isn't but that what he did? I agree with that. No, hear when me he out. Set Sean Lewis down. I agree with that. And Sean Lewis was packing his desk at that moment. I agree with that. He I, didn't agree even then. I agree with that. However, what I'm going to tell you is, yeah. When, when, what I'm just saying is, when you saw it happening, now here's where I'll bring a criticism. I think. That if that's the case, that happened too late. I think that should have been done earlier. You got too deep into the season, and it became it was just it was out of control at that point. You understand what I'm saying? That if you, I'm just yeah, saying. But if, if I agree with you, Coach, but if most if the majority of the games that were lost, except for the two blowouts, were less than a touchdown. Come on, man. And you and you take Sean Lewis out of the seat on game six, everybody, the narrative would be then that he gave up too quick on the man. He brought him in, but he didn't give him a chance. He changed him too quick. No, he let him go for another three games, right? Mm -hmm. And say, oh, no, this is not working. My son is getting towed up out here. I got to make a change. No, but what here's – but no, so Tell me exactly what I, you would I, have I, done in, I, I, in prime I, shoot. Okay, I'm telling you. Okay. When, okay, here we are. When we're now in game six, and I see, yeah. one, we're losing the sack battle, all of these things, I go to Sean Lewis and say to him, clear as the day is long, I'm sorry, I go to him and clear as the day is long, and this is you asked me what I would do. I ain't saying what Coach Prime yeah. should have done. Your question was, what would yeah. you do, Coach Hayes? That, am I right? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. I don't want to make sure people yeah. understand. I'm answering this as if it was me. I would make yeah. sure at the end of the day that we establish some type of run game to ease the pain. Nothing that what I'm telling you is nothing changed. There was no difference in game plan from week one to week nine until he relieved him of his duties. Or as some people say, he didn't get demoted. He got moved. So 
before he got moved, there was no efforts to change anything. And that's what I was trying to say about. So when somebody said that was a bad analogy, that's what I was saying about yelling instruction. When I get to game five and I see my son is already at, and I'm just, I'm straight making these numbers up because I don't know them by heart. I'm at game five and I'm already yep. at 25 sacks. Mm hmm. As the head coach, I got to go in that offensive coordinator office, sit down with him, and we got to devise a different type of game plan. And that never happened until game nine when they decided to make a change. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I gave you complete control of the ship for six weeks. Now, week seven, I'm like, hold up, bro. I, I, I'm just trying to, again, I don't have all of the true details so far as the amount of sacks that were happening in week four and five and six, but that's what I meant. So instead of, instead of just cutting him, we never saw, and you, could you, would you agree or disagree? Did you see any change in offensive gameplay from the time from week one uh, uh, TCU to week nine, when he sat him down, did you see any change of anything so far as more running attack, more anything like that? I saw an attempt, but I didn't see a sustained running attack change. Thank you. Because they they could that line wouldn't let them wouldn't move. That's not true. They couldn't stop. Control. That's not true, sir. That's not I, true. That's I, not true. That's not I'm true. I'm just saying what I saw. It might not be true. I'm just saying what I saw. Yeah, I because guess what? Sometimes what we look at in football yeah. is an optical illusion. That's not true. Yeah. You go look at all these guys, right? Even stats can be an optical yeah. illusion. When you look at them running the yeah. ball, yeah, you may take a one yard, two yard loss. But guess what you did? You mm -hmm. eased the pain. But people kill me with, oh, well, they couldn't run the they ball because they run. didn't they didn't put a true effort. And as an HC, hold on, as an HC, as as an HC, your job is to say, guess what? We off course right now. This is how we need to get mm -hmm. back on course, or we may need to change course. That's all I was saying. I'm with you. We don't we we speak in the same language. Mm -hmm. I agree with you totally. What you just said, but I, all I'm saying is, as far as the title, the to come into your show, what it's asking about attraction, distraction, it's an attraction because I say these guys Good. have earned what they're getting. Nothing wrong they with that. Have earned Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. You're hundred percent right. I asked the question. So everything they bring in, mm -hmm. these all the other schools are doing it, but they're doing it. They're not doing it in a public form of well-off media. They just doing it on their own private channels there with go. the guys, but they still out there doing it. Gotcha. I, and again, I said that clearly. <laughs> I said, you are a fool. If you think other kids at other programs don't have a diamond test to walk around in the locker room, but let me see your diamond, yeah. but beep, 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 beep. They all yeah. doing oh, it. Yeah. The difference is it's just not on camera. So like I said, I work yeah. at a middle school. I got a 12 year old walking around with a diamond tester. Man, get that crap out of here, man. Yeah, but anyway. There you go. But right, yeah, and I think one thing that you did say about it being a target, I think it does increase the target. Okay. Yeah. It does I, make it more visible. Because you're gonna only go after something that you see. There you go. If you never see it, you Come don't on. know to go after. I love the way you put that, so, sir. Thank you for putting it that way. People will attack this. Because they saw it, yeah. not because. Man, I love the way yeah, you put that. I, I love the way you put that. Thank you, man. Let me get to the next call here. All right, thanks, appreciate sir. you, brother. Thank you for calling in. Don't be a stranger. All, All right. right, fifty fifty four eighty four coming to you, real quick. Um, <laughs> and this right here, I don't know what he's stating, but this is what. It's not an opinion, bro. Not an opinion. I would love for you to call in Zulus. I know you come in here a lot too, but no, the funny thing is we all got Twitter fingers, but we could call in. I don't need your face. You can disguise your voice, but I would love to hear y'all point. It's easy to put a little statement up there, but I would love, I like having dialogue and conversation. Y'all just want to type me to death. We got a phone line, pay for it. I can have up to a thousand callers on here, guy. There's plenty of room. Call on in. Donnie C, all these other people, they love to just, as they, what they call it, troll Gerald D. Gerald D will never call in. They sure love to come on here. And I'm just saying, come on, let's talk about it. Because maybe you can tell me something that I don't know. 
I don't know everything. I don't. I don't. I don't even claim to know everything. But I just want to talk about it anyway. Fifty-four, eighty-four. Call or talk to us. Give us your name. Where you calling from? Hello. Yes, fifty-four, eighty-four. Hello, hello. This yes, Coach Callie. Say it again. How you doing? This is who? This is Coach Callie Sports. Coach. Oh, Callie what's Sports going on, Sports. man? What's going on? I'm glad you're on here. What's up, Doc? I'm good, man. What's I cracking, man? No, I remember the name coming up. I saw it pop up here, man. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, you correct me if I'm wrong, you left a comment on one of the videos. I can't remember what it was, so if you wouldn't mind refreshing my memory, uh, it would be great. Um, and I don't know what video man, it was Man, I on. do not remember. Oh, I okay. do not remember at all. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. But I will comment on your attraction or distraction. Um, I believe it's both. Mm. I believe it's all about how you handle it. You know, what players can handle. Because each player's individual is different. Some are able to handle all the attraction and stuff like that. And some are uh, get distracted. So you see that right now, even in their practices, coaches got to tell them this and that. And some are being distracted. But they're not distracted like they was last year. It was a lot worse last year than compared to this season. Well, this season hasn't began, right? So, um I mean, well, you know, this this year, as far as uh, them practicing in the spring and and you know, get getting all these new recruits in uh, and everything like that. So that's what I mean. I got you. So, so you say you can see it both ways. You yeah. see it in, in both lights. I can see it both ways. I can see it both ways. I mean, I, like I said, you know, I just think that, like my daughter, right, mm -hmm. when she was in high school. I made sure she didn't have a cell phone until she graduated high school because it was a distraction. It was a distraction. All these kids around here on, on, in school with a cell phone and talking in class and different things like that. So it, it kind of reminds me of what's going on with the jury and all of the flashiness of the cars and stuff. Yeah, those kids deserve it, man. They earn it. They deserve it. Mm -hmm. I got jewelry, but it, it's, I think it's a time and a place to wear it. That's all. Blinging it all the time while you're doing this, kind of like putting yourself out there to get attacked. Not and matter of fact, didn't that happen in Jackson? So can I just ask Coach him, Prime? I, hold on, I just want to make sure I'm hearing you clear because this is kind of what Coach JB was talking about. These kids wear it. The people say you brought his name up, but I'm just saying what you just said is very similar. I oh, ain't nothing wrong with Coach JB. Okay. You Coach JB from Compton. Okay, I yeah. don't want to hear what you're saying, but I'm listening. Go ahead. Uh, no, I, 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 it is a distraction, man. I just think it's a distraction because, like I said, you bring in. I'm from South Central. I was born and raised in South, South Central LA, but I live in Alabama right mm -hmm. now. And so I, I live about five minutes from Alabama AM. And, uh, but even in LA, I know going in LA, I'm not going to be wearing my jewelry out like that unless I'm, unless I'm, you know, going out of town or hitting the streets to where, you know, I'm taking the family out or something like that. That's the only time on. we're going somewhere real fancy or whatever. But other mm -hmm. than that, I just don't wear my jewelry all like that. Who am I trying to impress? Other dudes? I ain't trying to do that. So. So would this be equivalent to saying, like, this is an old school take? <laughs> What'd you say? No, I'm saying, would this be equivalent to saying, like, this is an old school take? Because we know these kids have jewelry, whether it's real or not, it, it's perceived that way. Um, like you said, people stole people stole some of the people's stuff uh, when they went to play UCLA. Yeah, if and, I'm not mistaken, and they got their car, and they got their car got they got their car broken into at Jackson. I think Shiloh, and then Coach Prime got his jewelry took him, which. I think they got it back or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. I heard uh, uh, was that they were talking about it on Ken Clark's show and about that whole issue, but I don't know, man. Well, here's the I thing. I don't want to blame. I, I don't. You know I, I mean? for, so here's the thing. I'm not saying that. Here's my deal. I I'm not saying that they shouldn't wear jewelry. I don't care. I no, wear. I mean either. Right. Me neither. I just think it's a time and a place. You well, know what I mean? Well, of course. And flashing it, yeah, you can flash it on the cameras and all that stuff, but man, you know, just be leery. You know, you guys are not street thugs. Y'all, 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 
y'all football players. So if you if you I feel like if they they know their boundaries, they good. I mean, you should be able to wear your jewelry anywhere. Just like Coach Prime said, the same thing. You should be able to wear your jewelry. You earn it. You should be able to wear it wherever you want to. But I think sometimes there is a time and a place. Yeah. yeah no. Listen, I'm all for you. I, I get it. I, I totally understand. Hey, hey Coach Hayes. Yeah. Coach Hayes. I want to ask you this thing, man. I asked you earlier in the in the message uh, down there. What's going on with this Carmani thing, man? I, I don't know, bro. I don't have an Nobody answer. Has it. Nobody no, has no, an answer. Nobody has an answer. And I had to tell you this, Callie. If I did know, I wouldn't tell y'all because that's not my place. See, <laughs> I, I'm being honest. If if I knew, I'm being dead serious. I, I've always mm. believed in protecting the player. That's their life. Mm. This is their gotcha. business. Me gotcha. telling y'all gotcha. has no relevance, but it can only hurt him. It doesn't make his life better well, if I know, told y'all. I just hope that whatever's going on, that they, he's able to overcome it and you know whatever happens you know what i mean that he's able to you know make it through it and fight through whatever was going on whatever is attacking him and his family right now you know so but why really be negative that, you if, know, you mind, if you don't mind if you don't mind but if you don't huh? mind if you don't mind kelly why are you why are you why you have a negative outlook on it because you say like whatever's oh, attacking no, their family positive too okay i'm just saying whatever is going on you know, whatever's mm-hmm. going on. Can I mention one more thing? Because y'all mentioned Sean Lewis mm-hmm. and Charles Kelly. Dog, I just want to say this, man. Charles Kelly, I feel like he sabotaged that offense too, man. I, I really do. Uh, from day one, I did not like the hire. I watched him play, you know, you know, Coach Kent State, and, and uh, it was trash. And Coach Prime, I think, even said that um, he didn't directly hire him or Charles Kelly. They came through like a a, a, reference. Uh, a reference where somebody recommend recommends him. Yeah, yeah. but he hired. Him. So, but he hired. Him. A, but he hired. Yeah, him. he hired him because he. So he. he I what I'm saying that. is, he he got to fall on his sword. At the end of the day, it's just what it is. Just because, just because you refer. But me, I knew that guy. I, I felt like I knew that guy was no, I mean, he wouldn't, I knew it and I saw it. I saw it coming from the get go. I said, that guy is not a good coach for uh, offensive coordinator for Shador. They should have, they should have stuck with Bartoloni, right? At least stuck with Bartoloni that first year. So let me ask you this. He he knows him very well. Okay. So let me ask you this, Kelly. Didn't you just say that when you saw him at Kent State, you said he wasn't good? I didn't like that. I don't like what I saw. He did play against Georgia. They played against Georgia, and they were close, and they made a game of it. Almost had a chance to get control of the game and beat Georgia in their own house, but then Georgia in the fourth quarter took over, and it was a wrap. Man, you ain't watched that I game. I watched the whole game. You ain't watched that game, though. You must have been on that cane juice. I you watched, ain't watch, man, I you watched ain't watch. that game, and I watched that Missouri game, too, that when Georgia played Missouri. Yeah. Bro. But anyway, I did watch that game. Brother, because they had Sheely is like Sheely is a quarterback, right? Brother, at half, you said the game was close. At half, it was 26 13. That's close, no, but they caught up. It was like it was like 24 to 20 or something like that in the third quarter. It couldn't be, and then the, Georgia it couldn't, it couldn't be, it couldn't be because the final score was 39 22. Here's what I'm gonna tell you Kent State. At the half, was was, thir- that game was close. That game was close. Yeah, when they kicked the ball off zero zero. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. At the uh, end, of- it was close. It was close, bro. At the-, the fourth, like fourth quarter, that's when they pulled away. Okay, I lost listen- that game. Listen, man, I'm looking to hear the box score. The score, mm-hmm. brother. The score at it's thirty. It was thirty. I know. It was, I know Georgia had scored like thirty something. I know the score. Hear me out. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was twelve to three. At the end of the first quarter, it was Mm -hmm. 26 to 13 at the half. Right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the third quarter, Mm -hmm. at the end of the third quarter, was Mm -hmm. 16, was was 16 to 32. That's two touchdowns at the end of the third quarter. Okay. And then they both scored. What I'm saying is, the game was, it wasn't a blowout. Hey, I could be wrong, but. 
Yeah, yeah, it wasn't here. a blowout. I just know that I wasn't a blowout. It, at first, I thought, you know, I, when I saw it, you know, it looked like it was a close game, and then they pulled away. I just remember that it was a little battle between them, and then they then it, they, just, they just pulled it like blew the doors off towards the end. Right. I, I, I just, remember. I'll just say this. Yeah, I, I'll just say you this. You got the stats, so you got the stats. You good? No, but I, I do want to say something about Sean Lewis, man. No, no, but I want to make this point. But, hold on, hold on. I, I, but I want to make this point. Because you said Sean Lewis was bad at Kent State. Right? Mm-hmm. You said he was. If he was bad at Kent State, then why would you say he sabotaged Coach Prime at Colorado? Why he just not a bad coach? Oh, because, it, because he was connected to the powers that be, man. He's connected. Just like him and Charles Kelly. Charles Kelly's connected. To who? Charles Ke- Kelly was is like Charles Kelly is like the Godfather of Bo Nix, man. That's his that's his godson. And to see him call that defense the way he was calling in Oregon, I'm like, dog. You know, isn't no, he 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 held that boy when he was a baby. Brother, y'all gotta stop this, dog. Um, so hold on. So you saying? His dad, his hold dad, I just gotta say, I dad, gotta. Charles Kelly and his dad are best friends. Okay, I got a call on the line. On the other line, but oh, I, wanna, I, I just want to ask this. I just want to say this. I get it. <laughs> but you're telling me. I just got to make sure I focus here. You're telling me. You're telling me. That's just my feeling. Hold on. Feeling who, who are the power? Who are the powers that be? Like I'm trying to. Who, who are these people? The Illuminati. Folks that don't want the folks that don't want to see Coach Prime succeed on this level, they and I feel like when they when Jack when he left Jackson State, the powers that be was so mad because in the South he was bringing all those recruits there to Jackson State, and that what that does is wake up all the other all the other HBCUs to get the same type of talent. They don't want them black kids going back to HBCU. So they, so somehow, in the midst of that, Coach Prime decides to leave because he was catching he was catching heat by the by the state people and by the uh, 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 you know whatever was going on down there in Jackson. So I got uh, you. Bro. I think that's what made him really leave. And I know it sounds crazy, but that's probably one of the reasons. Yeah, that's not, yeah. I, I I hear that part, uh. But to think that Sean Lewis and them were are hooked to like the the football Illuminati, uh, or something like that, and the best they could get out of the job was San Diego State. I mean, San. What it? What it? What it? I don't even know where well, Sean Lewis went. Well, and I Charles know this, Kelly. And I Charles Kelly at so Auburn. Paid. Where he at Auburn? Who? No, he was at Alabama. No, I'm saying where Charles Kelly. Where did he go? He's to? at Auburn now. That's what I'm saying. He's so, at Auburn now. So he, if he's yeah. hooked to the powers that be, he's at Auburn and other dude is in California. So out there, so, okay. Man, those dudes, because they not like the other coaches, like the other, the black coaches. Like, they got, they, you know what I mean? These dudes can get a job anywhere. So what about Char- Charles so, 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 Kelly? So, so hold on. Let me ask this next Look question. Look where he just left from. He lived, he went from Bama, Colorado, to, to uh, 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 Auburn. Okay, my this last one. guy. He leaves my- Kent State, go to Colorado, and gets a San Diego head coaching job. Okay, let me ask and this last question. They go what four? All right, and, listen, I'm done. They I got four I, games. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they won four games. I'm but, sorry, Coach Gates. No, you good, brother. Let me ask this last question here uh, before I move on because go ahead, my it's, brother. It's, it's, it's like an eclipse right now. My mind is messed up. It's like it's just coming across, and I can't, I can't focus as I listen I to this. Show. I love your show, by the way, man. I've been listening to you for over the past year, and I really love your show, man. I appreciate it, man. Just thank you. I want to let you know that. Yeah, thank you, man. Um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember that comment you left because it really it, it took me back a little bit. I had to like, man, who was this dude? But it threw me off. I can't remember what you I really can't, but I remember it was something that was really just like it was, it was, it was jolting. I have to say that much. Uh, but let me ask you another question. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was a little, little. Yeah, yeah. So it, I'm at my last question. I'm done. Is Robert Livingston? Yeah. Is he tied in as well? Is Robert Livingston tied in? Yeah. Is he part of that group? 
No, I don't think he's tied into that same circle that them guys are in because they are college guys. He coming from the NFL. Oh. So, so I think with this situation here, this defense is going to be way better. The defense, it looking even, it's looking better right now, and they still haven't plugged in everybody right now. But didn't he? Oh, they, but, they looking but, a lot better. But, but didn't? To, can I ask a question? But isn't this? You a, can even, but can but I, this a reference. This? Hold on, you real can quick. Even hear, you can you can. This a reference job too. Like he don't know Robert Livingston. He was referred to Coach Prime, correct? I believe so. I mm. believe so. Mm. Because they, I mean, they had some other guys lined up. But we, I mean, okay. it is what it is. It's trial and error. Yeah. All right. But I do think, I do think that Robert Livingston is going to do a better job. I just have a feeling that he's going to do a way better job this season. And the Big Twelve, the Big Twelve is, is going to be a lot easier uh, to me than the Pac-12. But they got a gauntlet to go through, man. Because that is, they they schedule is not easy to go in that Big Twelve. I got you, Cali. But, but listen, I got another the back, call. The Pac-12, the Pac-12. Huh? No, I was saying 0646. I'm coming to you right now. Don't hang up. But I was saying I got another call, man. So go ahead. Say your last all piece right, and we go. All right, my doing. brother. All right, thanks, man. Oh, I was going to say, man, that – all right, man. Have a blessed one. Thank you. You too, bro. Oh. You know, sometimes in life, uh, I'm coming to you, 0646. Sometimes in life, I don't even really know what to say, bro. I, I, I yeah, I, nah. Anyway, um, so when people come with those kind of stories and things, I wonder myself, what? I must play the world's smallest violin for those kind of folks. Y'all didn't know. Y'all didn't know I was a musician. I'm going to play the world's smallest violin for you all right now. The world's smallest violin, ladies and gentlemen. Here you have it. There you have it. The world's smallest violin. What are we doing? I can't take it anymore. When people come up here with that foolishness, they will be played the world's smallest violin. And whoever my man was that said, empty the phone line, you don't do no holding. You drop $50, I'll skip, you can skip the line. How about that? Y'all catch me out your dang old mind, bro. I'll tell you, boy, y'all on this champagne uh, uh, dreams with a big budget. You going you gonna to come on here. I ain't never seen you before. You know, you better be one of these callers. They're going to tell me. I need to clear the phone line. Cause you don't hold on. Well, y'all, 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 you must be part of the the powers that be too. Y'all not y'all dang on mine. Oh six four six coming to you. Call Hello, talk. Mr. Coach Hayes. How are you? Who am I speaking with? Speaking to uh, my name is Dorsey. I'm calling out of the Bronx, New York. First time caller on your show. Thank you, Dorsey. You're not the one that told me to clear the line, are you? Oh man, come on. <laughs> I'm just asking. I can't remember. I would never do nothing like that. That's crazy. I'm just crazy. Dorsey, talk to me. What's your thoughts, man? Okay. Uh, First of all, about the the whole thing. I know your show. You can't say, but you know, I'm not trying to curse. Um, I don't call it that whole naughty thing. 
Illuminati. Illuminati. Allu- Illuminati. Illuminati, right. Yes. I, uh, I call it the Negro Naughty, but you're going to use that other N word. That's when people just talk and jump to me. I go take that somewhere else. Anyway, bro, let me get to my, my quick thing. Um, first of all, uh, I love your show. Um, I followed you from the time you had teamed up with a, another person who was really on that CU movement. And uh, oh, you can say that. Kind of glad you got away. Oh, you talking about Chico? glad you got away from that. <laughs> oh, Chico? No? Yeah, man. I mean, listen, I don't have no hard feelings. Like I say, I don't have like people. I don't know why people feel like they can't say it. Like I really don't. I don't have no hard feelings. It was nothing. It's nothing else to debate. So that's why we don't do a debate show. But yeah, I get you. Go ahead. Right. But I'm listening. Because it wasn't really, it wasn't really a debate. Okay. Um, my <laughs> thing is, I, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm an actor. Okay. All right, so cool. when it comes to that whole, when it comes to the whole NIL thing, mm-hmm. it always gets me when I watch these shows and they talk about NIL and I don't see any of these guys except for a few players actually doing a commercial that's backed by a company that's selling a product. Mm. That's a name, image, and likeness deal. What they're talking about, or it seems like a lot of people are talking about is what they call, I guess, the collective of that's people correct. who actually get together and make money to give to these kids. That's correct. And it's funny you bring that up because Coach Prime has clearly defined the two different entities. Even though they both fall under NIL, Coach Prime himself, this is why I say people speak to their narrative. And really flawed, I'm glad you're in here. I've been trying to keep my sandwich clean as LMV. I really have. But what I was saying was th- this is it the narrative. Coach Prime clearly stated. That name, image, and likeness is not what's happening. He clearly said it's only a few people that's going to get name, image, and likeness, like his sons who do stuff for KFC and Google, um, you know, whatever the other. Those are name, image, and likeness deals. The cats that are just cutting checks, the guys that are just cutting checks, those are the collectors. And that's where Coach Prime said they don't have that kind of money. He can get right. now not name, image, and likeness deals anybody, for his kids, but go ahead. Right. Not not putting anybody down, but in order to do these commercials, let's be for real. You, you, you have to have somewhat of a command of the English language. <laughs> you have to be somewhat presentable because you're you're representing their product. So, so you, you you have to have some type of polish. It don't have to be great. But you have to be able to communicate. So everybody, like you said, is not going to get in front of a camera and read a script and have a real NIL deal. That's not for everyone that comes through the door. And, sir, if you don't mind me interrupting you for a quick second, Coach Prime himself also said this. (laughs) What company do you know is going to give a kid out of high school a name, image, and likeness deal, and they know nothing about him, but yet you're going to represent their company? Coach Prime said this. Now, I may not have it in quotations and saying it verbatim, but from a paraphrasing standpoint, Coach Prime himself said this. He said, what kid would a company give you all this money? They don't know nothing about you. These are the things. But but again, hold on. It doesn't fit the narrative of these folks. Oh my God! They got name, image, and lightning. They gonna do it. This Coach Prom clearly told you everybody not getting those deals. The collective pays you, and they just said I forgot what it's called. A 40, 54, 20, whatever the 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 the, the elevation is, fifty four twenty club or whatever it is. That's their collective, and they don't have the kind of money other schools have. So where's all of this? So where? So where's all of this? There's all of a sudden money coming from when Coach Prime himself, since they hang on every word, clearly told right. y'all we don't have they squeak, they squeak, collective money. They scream, these kids scream for a bag, but when you're talking NIL, the real NIL, then excuse me, you have to be presentable. You have to be able to read. You have to be able to, to, to push a product. Uh, lastly, and then I'm going to get off because I know you got business to take care of. Mm-hmm. My belief of the whole Colorado thing is that Coach Prime is a businessman. He's mm-hmm. a business man. Like Jay Z. Right. Yeah. So I, I look at Colorado as maybe he's trying to do the IMG of college. You understand what I'm saying? It's okay. almost like he's building the IMG of the college ranks. 
Mm -hmm. I'll bring in all the professionals from the NFL. And basically, we are that version of the high school version of IMG. We're the college version of IMG. That's the way I look at what he's doing as a business. It's like, to me, it's just becoming a huge, big business. If it works, great. If it doesn't, tweak it. Okay. But I don't get all, I don't put all my, invest all my, you know, feelings and stuff in it. It's a game. I enjoy the game. I enjoy the videos. What they do is what they do. Gotcha. Well, listen. Because eventually they're going to be millionaires and it doesn't matter what I think one way or the other. I totally agree. Now, what's your name again, brother? What's your name? Dorsey, like see Dor the door. Yeah, Dor Dorsey. All right. Well, Dorsey, man, you say you're in the acting field, man. I wish you number the best. One of my good friends, actually, his birthday today. He's an actor as well, man. So I wish you the best, man. Hopefully I see you on this big screen. Or maybe you already be on the big screen. You've been acting with Denzel or yep. whatever. Okay. No, not with Denzel, but uh, I've been a film called The Warriors. So uh, All right, man. All right. Well, that's awesome, man. <laughs> Check it out. Well, shout out to you, man. <laughs> hey, wish you nothing but the best, man, out there and what you're doing. You too, and, uh, sir. And, man, Love don't yourself. be a – hey, appreciate it, man. you find somebody else you can partner with that hey, is, is worth your time, man. I'm not going to debate no more. It's nothing to debate. I'm taking my watch and see, bro. I'm not going to debate anybody. I'm going to watch and see, and I'll react to what and I keep, see. There's no more debating and now. Keep your, keep your sandwich clean. Keep my sandwich clean. That's what I'm talking about. Thanks, man. You're welcome. Bye now. All right. If you guys want to call in, I got DP on the back line here. Anybody else like to call in 862-799-9956, please come on in now, because if not, I'm going to cut the line, and we'll go ahead and wrap this deal up. I got my man DP here in the line. And you're more than welcome. Uh, so forth. All right, here we go. All right, Dorsey, man. That was all right, man. Appreciate it. DP, what's up with you? What it do? What it do, coach? So I was just sitting here chilling, trying to record videos, listening to y'all. You feel me? What all you right. got going on, my guy? Everything Gucci? Man, I, I had to play the world's smallest violin today, dog. Uh, you know. <laughs> I, I, I've been good. Though. I've been good today. I've been good today for three hours and seven minutes. I've been good today. Enjoying my time here. Um, just talking and, uh, that's it, man. Well, see, man, I know you already understand everybody on Colorado solid. So it ain't nothing to worry about. Hey, DP, everybody solid. DP, do me a favor. I need you to look to your left. Look, look to your left. You you're looking to your left? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You standing up or you sitting down? I'm sitting down. I need you to stand up. Look to your left. All right. I need you to start walking to your left. In the nearest corner you see, go stand in it for five minutes. You got five minutes in the corner. <laughs> you got five minutes, dog. You got five minutes in the corner, DP. <laughs> They saying, coach, they solid, man. It don't matter from the from the first thing to the walk on. Everybody's solid, so we straight at Colorado. They solid. You got five. Even the water boy solid. Even the water boy solid. You got five. Y'all don't 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 no team got a better water boy in Colorado. I'm telling you that now. Tower boy, none of that. You got five minutes. Dog, it's already twelve o'clock tonight. Well, Colorado's the best coach. We solid. You know what? You seen how we did? You see how we did Miami basketball? You got Look, some boys like nine to sixty-eight. You got seven minutes. Though. We got better. We got we got we got better whistles too. Ten Our minutes. Ten minutes. Keep talking. You got ten minutes. <laughs> Keep talking. You got ten minutes. You got better whistles. You got ten minutes. Yeah. We're getting our AD a grill too. He gonna like that. Twelve minutes. You keep talking. I'm gonna keep adding. <laughs> yeah, man. We're getting the AD of Lamborghini. We gonna we gonna do donuts in the middle of the field right before the game. We're gonna turn up the team. Y'all cool don't got nothing like that. Go buff. <sighs> well, nobody else called DC. <laughs> DP, I I'm not bothering you. Man, we'll be in the locker room tonight, man. We're going to the locker room right here at 12. So I'm about to get up off of here, man. We can finish this convo later. Um, I'm, I'm definitely going to hop in there before I go to bed. Man, hey, man, you heard from Cool from the crib? 
You heard from Cool from the crib? Uh oh. You know what's crazy? I was I was tickled so bad. It was so funny when E Brown said Cool from the crib and Shot Time was the same person. Oh yeah, that was funny. But I, I ain't talked to Cool in a minute. I ain't talked to Cool in a minute, so I got a little. I, you know, I get a little nervous when you hear people constantly. You know, people may miss a show or two or three or four, but they eventually call in. It's been a minute, man. It's been a minute. Yeah, it's like Miss Wilcox. She got me nervous. I ain't I heard know. from her in a minute on the show. I've been wanting her to call in. I know. All right, well, like I say, man, we're gonna definitely be in the in the in the locker room here in 10 minutes. So for those that don't know, if you'd like to become a member, all you gotta do is hit the join button down up below. Once you become a member, you can go to the Discord, link your YouTube and Discord together. It'll open up that back door for you. But the Discord is free. You know, it's a little general area. People want to get on there and talk and chat. But we have, you know, where you could talk to each other and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, we'll definitely see what's up, man. But I guess nobody else called in. So let me go to get this phone line off the deal. And uh, we'll go from there, man. So with all that being said, guess what, man? I appreciate y'all. Just want to pose a question. Attraction or distraction? That's it. And it all depends on how you see it. Because, again, it is the offseason, a little slow. I think Colorado don't play their spring game until the 27th, if I'm not mistaken. So the back end of this month, uh, the portal does open up in the middle of their spring session. So it'll be interesting to jump in and who jumps out. Um, right now, Miles Slusher is out. Savion Washington apparently is supposed to be happening. Um, but we'll see. And then it'll be interesting to see who jumps in to Colorado. Will Martinez come from Oklahoma State? I'm sorry, from Oregon State. Because we've seen, I think, three players from Colorado leave Colorado and go to Oregon State. Maybe they're making an even exchange, even swapping the swindle, I guess. But Martinez was a decent running back. Um, and so who knows? We'll definitely find out. But for everybody that donated, thank you all so much. I appreciate your time. Check us out tomorrow. Kane's Talk Live going to be jumping because the Miami Hurricanes got some stuff going on. And somebody got some splaining to do, Lucy. Somebody got some splaining to do. <laughs> so with all that being said, we out of here. Peace, love, and hair grease. we we'll catch you at the 50-yard line. Peace. Man, I had to play the violin for that boy. That boy here, man. I had to play the world's smallest violin for that boy. Trip that boy.